fly by flapping my arms. <clears throat> Welcome to the saga of Fortlandia, for which I made the stupid poster thing. I thought it'd be funny. <laughs> have a poster for it because <laughs> we're playing pop cthulhu baby and in pop cthulhu in pop cthulhu there's only one rule you don't say no until i say no otherwise okay. f fucking drive your car straight into a wall and blow them up with, with with bricks i don't know have fun kids in the saga for atlantia will take place in the prestigious country of america which has just started the great depression after all, the, ro the Roaring Twenties have just ended, and World War II is at the horizon. In fact, I'm pretty sure that Hitler's active in some respect right now. But that's not really... That? <laughs> but that's not really important. For I mean, I think... I don't know when Hitler's trials took place, but I know that he at some point published Mein Kampf, and that was kind of when he started to make his rise to power. But whenever that was published, that's for then. And I don't know if that's necessarily going to get translated and or imported to America. That's a whole different case. Especially since there's no European Union and no massive trade deals between Europe and, uh, you know. Point is, you're in America, and specifically, you're in Boston. To be more specific, I need everyone to rate me a con roll. Because it turns out that we're going to start this off with the screeching of tires as your automobile is darting through the streets. Behind you are some men yelling very loudly. To be specific, these fine gentlemen are gangsters who are wielding a variety of exotic weaponry which is to say firearms, and they intend to use them. Next to you, in this, you are all sitting nicely inside of a Ford Model A, because it's the 1930s, and that exists now. Ooh. I'm pretty sure this is going to be Baby T. Claire's Ford Model A. Isn't that right? Put holes in my <laughs> probably. To be more specific, you're probably the one driving it, because you have the best drive auto skill. You'd probably be the, the wheel man. As the grease monkey. Well, cursing them, I don't want them to poke holes in my, uh, uh my comp is speed. 1935? Oh, wow. Gosh, I didn't know it was that early. Although, I guess there is a large period of time between the, the Great War and, like, th this is the funny thing, when you, when you learn history, you don't really realize how much time, like, it's a generation between those wars. Okay, so what? So okay, so what happened in 2020? All the students are like, so what happens? Like, okay, listen. First off, we're gonna have to start about the rise to power of the com communist socialist empire. We're gonna have to talk about Donald Trump and the, the fall of fascism. It's like the fall of fascism. It's like, yeah, that's what they call it. Listen, the historians named it way too early. They got really anxious about this. It, listen, this is like, th then they're like, this is like the fourth fall of fascism module after Hitler, Mussolini, and Stalin. It's like, yeah, listen, please shut up. I hate this. And and then one of them pulls up a beer bottle because they think they're fucking clever, and the teacher's like, listen, that joke happens every time, and I'm so sick of it. They called it the Black Summer, by the way. It has a name now. And then what happened? And then the West Coast of America was on fire. So that, that's not a thing, how many, how many, how many cool actors died? Well, a couple, but a lot of them were found out to be pedophiles. Oh, my God. Kobe Bryant. Who's that? Just a legend. It's like, teacher, does God have a sense of humor? And it's like, I'm pretty sure God died that year. Oh wait, did we have to roll under R? Oh yeah, we did. No. Bad. Okay. Yeah, you have to roll under yeah, your statistics. That's how high statistics are good. Also, so, how do you roll these things? Uh, you simp. Uh, okay, this is this is kind of awkward, but you have to like click the the letters. You just need to roll a success, otherwise things go a little bit better. Oh my goodness, why is Prospero rolling in secret? What a weirdo. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, I, I clicked on the page. I clicked on the page. I clicked on con. Click on con and then a little window pops up for bonus. Yeah, but I just, I just clicked on the computer. All these fine gangsters are also going to be rolling their checks. Actually, there's something I just remembered that I can do in this. 
I just remembered this. There's this stupid table, and I love it. It's the best table ever. It lets me do this. Oh, that's cool. So, normally, I can just click this button, and it makes it disappear. And I can be just, hey, click that fucking button. And then you click the button, and it automatically rolls con for you. Okay, cool. So, I think just about all the gangsters made this check. So, this is how... So let me tell you how check how this what this check does. This is a chase. You are currently being chased. During chases, you start off by rolling a con check. This is to see how much endurance and stamina you have over the course of this fine challenge. Fail it, and your move is reduced by one. You succeed, and your move goes up by one. Um, yeah. So, can everyone tell me their move number? Okay, the gangsters are... The, okay, so the gangsters are all one. Movement action skip. Okay, I was hoping this would be a little bit more uniform, because it's not the hardest thing in the world. Let's go for it. Okay, cool. We got We have gangsters. They got their seven. We got the intrepid gangster. No. The gangster has six. We got Bella. We got Sala. We got Claire. We got Prospero. Prospero succeeded. So his movement is increased by one, which means that his is Jesus Christ ten. I forgot this guy's fast as fuck. But don't worry, that's gonna get compressed down real fast. Okay, uh, baby Claire succeeded. Marvelous. Your movement rate becomes a nine. Your movement rate is eight, so that becomes nine. Yes, it worked that time. And I think Bella failed. Yeah, I got a nice spot. That's a, that's a hard thing. Bellos goes down to seven. So, now that we have all these numbers, what happens is that we're going to crunch them down to one. So, the gangsters, those become one. No, wait. The, oh, no, the intrepid gangster causes this all to be weird. So, uh, those get two. You get two. Zyla, you are three over six. So you, four. four. Mm, why do you want to do that? You succeed it. Like, I'm taking your initial roll, which was a... F which was a... Oh, no, you're not up there. Okay, cool. In that case, you failed. Cool. You want to push? They can't push that, though, because there's nothing to push. Okay. Um, let me double check that. Okay, in that case, you're just, uh... You're, you're shoving. So you're like, ah, two. Cool. There, are, There's everyone's movement rates. Or movement actions per turn. So, in a chase, there's a couple of things you can do. One is you can fucking get the hell out of here. You can shoot at people. You can try to overcome obstacles and more. But we'll get to that in a moment. First, Paul Prospero speaks up and he says, "Listen, I, l listen, guys, I had no, no, goddamn clue these guys would be so angry. But I thought they'd be happy if I finally got myself a paying gig for for once and could pay off some of the debts." At that point, Bella, it's your turn. You're sitting in a car. Your friend is trying desperately to keep the wheel. When you're in a car. Chase, there isn't too much you can do other than shoot at the other guys, but there is one thing you can do, and that's try to help your friend. During the turn, one person can provide what's called advice, which is to use navigate or spot hidden, and it gives your good friend a bonus drive auto die. Oh. Essentially, you're the guy who's like, Go, take that turn, watch out for that, get around that baby. Uh, I'm, I'm just going to be like young, left, left, we go left here. Where my spot hidden? Or through the alley. We're gonna... They're gonna through the alley. You gotta work. You gotta weave. I will weave and I will, I will work. Marvelous. Marvelous. Okay. Roll me that. Okay. Ooh. We succeeded. Cool. Yeah. I don't like the, the gold they're using because it's a little too close to red. It is. Oh, wait. I forgot to click. Okay, cool. I don't know why the ring doesn't animate, but whatever. Zyla, it's your turn. What do you do? Well, I'm going to try and shoot at his most intelligent twin. They need those tires. I'm going to shoot at them. Okay, let's talk about how you shoot tires. Uh, tires have three armor. They have two hit points. If you deal five damage, a tire will pop. But a tire is very tiny. A tire is fast moving. A tire is far away. They're hard to hit. Let me pull up the specifics for this. Oh yeah, I gotta open one more sheet because for this is the one thing I don't like about Call of Cthulhu is that everyone, you need unlike in 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 most D and D games where you just need the core rule book or the PHB, I need all the books because the chase rules are not in the, in the player guide. Here we go: vehicular collisions should be around here. Monsters in a chase? No. 
Switching between modes of movement, range attacks during a chase. Here we go. Vehicle tires may be targeted with gunfire. Apply an additional penalty die to the tires because of their small size. Tires have an armor value of 3 and can only be damaged by mechanical weapons. If a tire takes 2 points of damage, it bursts. A burst tire reduces a vehicle's build by 1 point. Vehicles stop moving when they have no build points left, which essentially they've been totaled. A vehicle of their type has 4 build points, so you have to shoot out all their tires to do some damage before they actually stop, especially if they're this persistent. Alright. You want to roll me that handgun check? How many? How, what, do you, what do you do? Go, show me the goods. Oh, you can use the rifle, huh? <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, first and foremost, you do have two actions. You could try to aim and negate some of the penalty. Handsome. Very, very handsome. Okay, you take out your rifle. You take aim. You click me the rifle. Click the rifle on combat. On the combat tab, click the rifle. It'll open up your, your shooty shoot time. By the way, you still have 30 uh, points you haven't spent? Yeah, I was redeveloping it because that was going to be the one you Now, go nuts. Go nuts. I don't care too much about it at this point. I'm going to turn that off at some point, but not right now. Cool. Single shot. Uh, you have disadvantage because it's a small target. You are aiming. It's also at long range because they are kind of far away. Oh, that makes it harder. Neat. All right, cool. Uh, click me that. There we go. Click me that button. For shooting. Ooh, that's an impaling shot. Impaling. So I want you to click roll damage so you can see how fucking f just maddening an impaling strike with a gun is. Thirty points. So. So the way an impaling strike works with a weapon is you maximize the, uh, the base roll and then you roll again. It is terrifying if you get an impaling strike. Like, a revolver impaling strike will kill a man. It's basically a headshot. But for the purpose of a car, we'll just say that you pop a tire, but you also pop it in such a way that also immediately dents the, the axle in the process. So their car just suddenly loses a vast amount of control. I'm going to say that whoever's driving is also going to have to roll me a, a, roll, a drive auto check, a hard one, to keep control of their vehicle. Because they are... About start swing. Oh, cool, I didn't give him drive auto skill. Of course I didn't. Well, that can be remedied very easily. Let's take out skills. Let's take out drive auto. Let's click the drag. Shot, my um, pop it. 40. Handsome. Cool. We're gonna roll 40%. Gotta roll a hard one. Gotta roll a hard one. Ooh, he makes it. You watch the car, the northern car, because there's two cars. You watch the northern car swerve! As the tire keeps up underneath them. But they manage to keep it back on track and they're coming right at you. Vroom, vroom, baby. Paul is, is, is panicking in the back. He's going to lean on out. Take out... You know what? He, he's got a gun. Although this isn't his car, so he probably only has his revolver with him. He doesn't go around with his bolt-action rifle everywhere like some people here do. Although you're a spy, you probably have a much better reason than he does. Yeah, I have these things all over the place. Why does he have 128 personal points when he's into 70? Whatever. Take out that revolver, baby! Shooting at extreme range, because he's trying to make quite the target. Disadvantage, aiming. You know, he's going to just discharge that gun as much as he can. You got it, Prof, bro. Anything else? Okay, cool. Bam, bam, bam. Oh, heck, he actually did it. <laughs> what a fucking champ, he did it. Trust your kind of boss, bro. Uh, oh, why? Why doesn't one roll damage? Let's see, extreme... Oh, no, he needs an extreme success. Regal doesn't do it. Okay, cool. Forgot about that. By the way, if you need an extreme success to succeed, and you roll an extreme success, you do not roll an impaling strike. Sorry to say. Marvelous. So, Prospero Discharge Weapon. It now comes to the person who's driving the car. Claire. So, how about we talk what you can do? So, when you're in a car, you can do something called Accelerate. Normally, you spend a movement action, you move one space. You will escape this chase when you are ten spaces ahead of these guys. Now, since you're in a car, you can go a little bit faster than just one location per, but you take a penalty. Let me, let me explain this to you. You can move one 
one space for one action, of which you have four, you can accelerate a little bit, go two or three locations with one movement action, any hazards you encounter along the way have a penalty die. You can also move four or five. In that case, you get two penalty dice. How much do you want to step on that pedal, baby? Well, I got... I got I, 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 can I do any kind of, like... I, I, I did help. Yes, so I want yeah, you... Like, movements to try to, like, shake them off us or make things you know, worse for them, chase us. Yeah, sure. Well... I th there there is something for that. That's like you spend the movement action to just make it hard on them, I guess. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. Pedal to the actually it's called pedal to the metal, but I like the term accelerate because that that's a bit more fun. Let's see. One combat round, one action. Cool vehicle tires. Yeah, so like that. Character running, characters creating hazards, pausing for a door, cost one move action. Okay, cool. All right, you can roll me a hard drive auto check to to quickly shake him off by taking a very inconvenient route. Uh, Essentially, you're beckoning and weaving through traffic instead of taking it nice. So click drive auto, set the difficulty to hard, and show me the goods. You have a bonus dice dice to drive because your friend is helping you out. How do I? Let's click on it. Why is it? You open up that pop up? Yeah, to open up a little pop up. So maybe like close your window. Go back. Now, go to the skills tab and click the skill Drive Auto. Not on development. Oh, gosh. I'm, like, in development. I'm stupid. Claire. It's because she's done. Yeah, click Drive Auto. Ooh, that's not a success. Though you screech your tires, you do not manage to create any significant distance via your maneuvers. You have three action movement actions left. How do you want to spend them? Uh, all right. I'm going to accelerate. Hell yeah, how much are you accelerating? How, how how pedal to the metal are you taking your first movement? I will take it slow at first, but uh, I'm going to go for one. Ying ying! Screeching tires as you turn down a corner. Create some moderate distance between you and them. But they will catch up on their turns, of course. Which, uh, if I, can I chain that into kind of making things difficult for them? Oh, you, you can spend your movement points however you like. You've got two left. Alright, so I'm going to try it. Is it still hard, even though I'm a little further away? It's still... Like, the, the hard difficulty is you're trying to create an obstruction while also trying to drive your car. Alright, let's try it again. That's a success. You ram into the side and create a hazard for them to overcome. Specifically, right after that turn you just took, you, you knock something over, which is difficult to do when you're driving. And it Let creates a... Show them true Metalchemist driving. Marvelous. There, there's now an extra hazard, namely a fallen. We'll say it's a it's a trash can. It's like a bunch of trash cans that fall onto the road. Hang, hang. You've one moving action left. What do you do with it? There is an obstacle coming up, so be careful. Can I prep for the obstacle? Or is it, uh... Well, you can, but you have to be there first. Okay, so maybe I just accelerate to it. I guess. Okay. Well, that's not accelerate. Accelerate is if you move more than one space. Cool. Next turn, you're going to have to take a sharp turn, and if you lose it, well, you're just going to... Well, here's how a hazard works. If you miss a hazard, you just lose some movement actions, as you have to, like, back up and drive back into it. So it's not a huge loss, but it is something to consider. Meanwhile, there's the guys behind you. Hang, hang! Also, it, I think it would stop, like, any active movement. These guys are going to go. Baby Claire's turn. It's time for the gangsters. Which one of you guys is driving? We'll say that it's the leftmost one that takes care of all the driving checks. He goes, meh, meh. and he's got to accelerate to the max. He's going to put his pedal to the metal, hack a little squid. He's in the driver's seat, and he's behind the wheel. Unless it's <laughs> my improved steed. Okay, cool. He needs to roll me some, some handsome, handsome checks to see if he can drive straight through a bunch of car cans. He still needs to make a regular check. He doesn't have any friends helping him. Oh, wait, no. I, I, do you know what? One of his friends will probably help him out with this. Although he already makes a check. Behind you, you hear the roaring engines. Okay, so this guy takes care of that. He'll move when he moves. But for now, these guys can't move. They'll have to delay their turn. Although this guy is ready, so that guy... That guy uh, 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 okay, cool. Gotcha. 
Wow, their driver is last. That sucks. Mm -hmm. This driver <laughs> is, is going to wait on his turn. You can delay that. Turn still happens, but he's going to wait until his friend is like, Hey, I'm going to help you out. Don't worry about it. I need to make sure this guy's... What if, like, everyone grabbed the wheel at once, and we all just drove together like friends? Oh, yeah, and there's two cars, so they bo do, do both cars have to go through the uh, obstacle? Yes. The, the, I mean, if one of them, like, goes critical, like, rolls a critical success, then they probably just barrel through it, but otherwise, right. probably not. Well, there's a fruit stand. If you there's want a fruit, a fruit stand... <laughs> there's always a fruit stand in the chase. Hing, hing. My cabbages... This guy's gonna spot some hidden... He's going to be like, oh, my friend, look over there. And he points the wrong direction. The guy's not paying attention. He's not interested in this in this helpful advice. This guy's like, oh, I'm going to get him. I got my gun. I got him. Get him. This guy's also like, oh, yeah, I'm going to get him, boss. Probably a good thing I drove a little farther away from him then. At full rocket speed. Hang, hang. Uh. Going forward. Going straight into those trash cans, baby. You never see it coming. Ooh, that I think is a f that is not a critical failure. That's a fumble, because the skill is less than fifty. Fumble range is ninety five and up. So, you know what? I'm just gonna say that his car just crashes and he's out of the chase. You look behind you through the window as you're sh probably still taking aim, and you see this guy just go, boom. Was that the one that broke the axle? Let's just say that the axle just snaps under it and the vehicle crashes to a halt into a wall. I think I killed it. We well, killed the car at the very least. <laughs> God, you really live up to that helmet, don't you? <laughs> He's really into this. Oh, this guy delayed his turn to, to make his, his checks. He's also going to put the pedal to the metal. He's got a friend helping him out, so he only has to roll a decent one. He only has to roll this one. He has no penalty or bonuses because he's just moving a little bit. He's going to take it easy. Well, uh, he loses the... Let's see how many he loses because you lose 1d3 movement actions. He loses two. So he'll lose his other action that turn and he'll lose his next action. So the car behind you has taken a break. But let's focus on something else for now. It's back at Jim's Diner. Oh, flashback. <sighs> You're having a nice sit down with your good friend Paul Prospero who is excitedly telling you that he met this guy who's got this case for him. And he told him to come meet him here. I'm like, come on, guys. It's gonna be a, he's, he told me it's going to be a big-paying job. Like, he heard of us. He heard of us. We'll make it up in this world. Maybe at some point, maybe you'll actually start to outshine me a little bit. <laughs> got anything to... What are you eating at Jim's Diner? I'm uh, uh, most American things. A Dutch apple pie. Got a hoagie. I have myself a sloppy Jimmy. A sloppy Jimmy? <laughs> of course it is. <laughs> We're all just terrified how you eat that thing. Yeah, listen. The helmet. <laughs> listen. If a sloppy Joe is, is called sloppy, because, you know, it, it can flop a bit because of the, 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 the construction, a sloppy Jimmy is, what if someone put grease on it, too? It is a sloppy well, see, what, Jimmy. I just looked it what's up. Really bother you oh, no. Is while you're he doesn't eat in your presence, actually. He just you, he sits in front of the sandwich, and only when you leave do you notice the sandwich is in fact gone. I just imagine it's never looked away. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if we look back, there's a bite. <laughs> sloppy Jimmy has biscuit. No, no, I know what's going on. You're, you're, you actually like take a ferret out of your pocket, and the ferret takes a bite for you. I don't take my helmet off. Then you watch your you watch your friend point outside. Oh wait, wait, wait. Yeah, everyone has said their Mitch is cool. Then he points us out excitedly. There he is. Look at them. Look at that guy. Look at that fancy suit. Indeed outside you see a man in a fancy suit. We're being employed by a suit. I like it. Who the hell's Phil the reporter and why is he a side character? I don't know. But he's using Claire's token and that's illegal. A tall, lean gentleman makes his un entry. He has a small suitcase in one hand and a finely tailored silk suit. It is quite an impressive figure. The navy dark blue and the strict red tie emit a sense of authority, yet composure. 
His posture is perfectly straight, and his shoes clack like a drum. Every beat he steps, he comes closer. Such a long step, such stiff steps, like his entire body is tied to wooden boards. He stops next to you and has only eyes for Paul. Prospero. I see that you have gathered your friends. Mind introducing me to your fine accomplices. Uh, hi, Mary Ma Maples, a cult awareness, uh, you know, photojournalist. Uh, nice to meet you. Uh, what's your name, Paul? He holds out his hand for you to shake. I, I, I shake it. His hand is cold as a corpse as it wrenches around your fingers and he shakes it at a steady pace but unrelentingly so. It is... Imagine if a machine had to shake someone's hand and it was just getting the hang of it. My name is Mr. Fitzgerald. I am a fully authorized representative of Mr. Henry Ford. I assure you that I'm here on business only. And the rest then. He wants to know what y'all's name is. Y'all. Uh, the other one wants to know what floor is that on. The last one kind of describes the area. Uh, floor B around. I guess I would know what floor that is based on this. Three lines of yellow. Enter. And the eccentric gentleman with his hat. Yes. I am Hank the Hill of the Brotherhood of Metal Metalchemists, Grand Squire. I tell you what. I see. Well then, I have the letter that you insisted I give in presence of your friends. He reaches into his jacket and pulls out a crisp, flattened letter and plants it on top of the table. If you have any further questions, I would love to answer them to the best of my ability as I have been authorized. Go ahead and give it a read. I mean, you get to keep the handout, so... <laughs> I know. It's just you prefer to keep that when you have more little pamphlets. Sure. I mean, I personally, I like the idea of, like, someone has eidetic memory, therefore they, get, they don't get to keep all the whole, all the whole, the whole, whole, the whole handouts. Look at that sloppy Jimmy. What's brisket, though? Brisket is puree. Uh, brisket is... So Sloppy Jimmy's is better than Sloppy Joe's, huh? It's like a, oh, yeah. a Sloppy Joe. We had Sloppy yes. Joe on steroids. <laughs> Hence the helmet. Noble meal. <laughs> noble meal. Well, you can tell me when you're done reading it. As she's well. reading it, she just nods. None of this kind of seems in Pinkerton. assure you that you are not required to handle the employees. You are merely required to discover the nature of the disruption and resolve it. Uh, hi. Uh, do, do you need like a, uh, like a uh, medication for your, your chest? You, it seems kind of rough, right? I and, uh, assure you that I have everything perfectly under control. If anything, I have never been without control. Okay, I'm done reading. Marvelous. And Paul's like, come on, guys. 500 bucks, and I get a car. Ooh, you get right, to work uh, for a grand industrialist. 
Oh, whatever you want to call it. Oh, come on. Who doesn't want to go over to Detroit on, on company pay? Get a little trip out. We can go out to the lakes and go fishing when we're done. What the hell are you talking about? <laughs> oh, uh, you know, uh, lakes. Well, they're huge lakes, of course. <laughs> and they're just massive. Oh, yeah. Everything breaks down over, the over time, my friend, except metal. <laughs> he does not listen to that part. Oh, come on, Hank, don't semen. you? <laughs> semen. Like scoop. And while that's not my usual forte, I can, like, kind of freelance this. Isn't this, like, Oh, it's ghost stuff? Oh, hi, hi. It's my forte then. <laughs> yeah, the whole thing is, uh, it's like ghosts. Maybe. Oh, yeah, just, yeah. The cult awareness is all about this kind of junk stuff. And grand industrial knowledge, which will be gained just by working with you guys. There you go. I'll go with you guys when it comes to all this. Yeah, that's story for story, and boss Ex or employer makes four. Excellent. Mr. Ford will be glad to hear of your successful assignment soon enough, but I do recommend that you come as soon as you are able to. He straightens his tie, and unless you have any further questions, he will take his leave. Yeah, so he walks as janky as he walked in. He all, I mean, it's not janky, it's just that he moves as if it's all business all the time. Uh, his suit needs a little less starch in it. You watch him shake Paul's hand, and you can see the slight discomfort on his face as that man just... He does one, he does one of those finger grabs, you know? Not, not by the palm, he goes before the fingers. And he squeezes real hard. So your fingers get all, like, pushed together, and it's like, ah. As you think back on how he got into the situation... Uh, I need to remove some gangsters off of this initiative list. Because they are... They, they they crashed. They're they're out of here. Bella, what do you do? They're right behind you. They're cr they're just barreling through those trash cans, and then uh, they got well, caught on them. I ain't no shoes. It's not like you can help me get old Hank with the speed. Watch your out, horse. Hank. There's a sharp turn coming. Your horse needs to make a turn. Yes, make it. Right there. Oh, that spot hits me. No. For <laughs> For the Lord <laughs> Oh hell that's a bonus die. Sorry about that. Oh, yeah. oh wait, no, it's bonus die for Babe G Judy or Stormwave, what do you do? Don't worry, I I I fix your tokens so next time I put them down there they're the right letters. <laughs> You know what? You can use one to remove an action to roll me spot hidden and see perhaps you can see something that can function as an obstacle that you can shoot real fast. Ooh. Taking a quick look around. Also, I think that because it's yeah, two stars means that it's a... Uh, give it a quick look at the place. Ooh, you do see something. Um, oh gosh, what would be like a stupid thing you could shoot? That would... Okay, I got... No, not a... No, I'm I'm thinking of something like like a big like one of those big donuts they hang on signs. They they got like a yeah. big donut tied to to like a small trolley that a guy has been carrying. You're pretty sure that if you shoot that just right, you can get the donut to roll out into the street. Like in the way instead of just being on this uh handcart. Guys, I got something. I mean, I'm just going to turn and like go for the shot. Roll me a shot. You have a penalty die probably. No, that's no, no, that's like a long range rifle. Let's see. What would apply here? I think... Well, you are shooting for... Get out of here, duo. Um, fast doesn't apply because you're the one moving. Well, I guess the target is rel moving relative to you, but... <laughs> you're shooting at a stationary target. So you can give yourself an advantage. Because it is a stationary target you're shooting. Well, you need to click that for me. Oh, oh, I have to click this for you. Can you click the roll button? Because go ahead. <sighs> 
you can spend four luck to pass. Time to take that four. Click the button. Which button? The, the, if you click the, the result, it expands, and it shows you a button that says spend four luck to pass. Oh, I should probably turn this off, because you can't... Oh, no. Wait, 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 wait. Normally when I turn off character creation mode, it gets rid of... Okay, cool. Now you have a section that mentions what your luck is. And you can also tally your hit points. Uh, by the way, if you do not have a luck number, which I had happened to one of my sheets... Okay, no, you won't have what you need. Okay, cool. You shoot, and another obstacle happens. Gosh, th these poor gangsters. What do they have to contend with? Now people now have to maneuver their way around a donut. Uh, good old Polly P is, uh, you know what? He's, he, he, he's getting a bit frantic from all this. Because, you know, it's, 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 it escalated so quickly. Baby T. Claire, you have four movement actions. How do you want to spend them? You're about to come up to a sharp turn. Yes. You can spend a movement action to gain another bonus die on such a such an event. Like you take it nice and slow. I'm go yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to I'm gonna do that. Okay, so you have three actions left, then you spend one to probably go through it. Go ahead. Roll me drive auto. You have two bonus dice. Okay, so pull. Alright, and roll. That is such a cool good system. Ooh. Man, if it wasn't for those bonus dice. Yeah, that was <laughs> Hang hang. I'm glad I went careful with that. Okay, you have two movement actions left. You've managed to make that sharp turn nice and easy, taking it slow. Well, since we're out for the start turn and we're like getting ahead, and the things are now getting more troublesome. The answer is, uh, I'm gonna accelerate to go forward. Cool. How many how many movements are you taking? I think I think two. Okay. Yeah, let's see. So you take one movement, and they take one movement, or is there you moving two for one? Uh, I take both both, both uh, for one movement. Cool. Can you roll me another drive auto check? You're coming up to a steep hill. And after all those twists and turns, you might not have the speed. You gotta gotta push that car. Give what he got. Would you like to Would you like to push that roll, or spend luck? If you push the roll, you might damage your car. As you basically put the pedal to the metal, and kick it up a notch. You know what? I have faith. I'm gonna push it. <laughs> well, expand it and then click. Oh, oh, <laughs> that is exactly what you need. Oh man. <laughs> How I your car, oh, your car, your car gears groan for a moment until you manage to get grip and drive your way up the steep hill. Ring. Okay, cool. That's all you could do. Uh, careful, gangster. Gonna wait a moment. His 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 convenial gangster friend. It's gonna. I don't know what convenial means, but I like how it sounds. It's gonna be like, oh man, look out, look up, look out up ahead. He, he doesn't know how to give any decent st strategic advice. This guy, with two penalty dice, is just going to fucking book it. <laughs> and he just... Oh, wait, no, not 34. 1d3. Okay, uh, he, he slams into the donut and needs to spend a whole bunch of time backing back out. I think you guys are going to make it out of this because he lost his whole turn and you have a pretty clear way ahead. Marvelous. But we have something else, and that's... How did you get with gangsters? Well, that's where another flashback happens, baby. <laughs> Man, this is like that one time. Man, 19, 10 times were weird. You go back in time all the time. <laughs> Hank of the Hill looks at, uh... What style's character name again? Dorothy? Yeah, no, uh, Dorothy, yeah. Dorothy, It looks at her very seriously, though you can't tell. Whoops. Do you see that? You guys accidentally got assigned, like, adjectives and stuff. Yeah. Dor Dorothea, do you see that? <coughs> the flashbacks. <laughs> Sorry, that was too mad. I'll, I'll too you mad. guys are walking up to a large building, which has a sign that just straight up says... what. What would you call your place if you were a mafia boss and you were you were running a, a business? Goodfellas. Sure. It's Goodfellas Moving and Storage Company. They'll hold on to your stuff when you don't need it. Wink. 
Your good friend Paul Prospero, who, you know, you know he has some debts with the local mob. He, he straightens out his coat and goes... Oh, wait. Oh, no, the office. I, I had to set up to have, um... Viewing restrictions. I set up the walls and everything, and it doesn't seem to use them. Huh. Sight limit, unlimited. Global illumination is dim. You guys can see everywhere, by the way? I think... Oh, okay. okay, I think I know what's up then. Your tokens don't have vision associated with them. And apparently you can't see shit. That's hilarious. Um, I'm just going to set this to bright vision. Bright light, because... If you give me like five seconds, I can give all your tokens vision, and I'm going to make sure that that happens in the future as well. Mr. Pauly, who's with you, strains out his jacket and tells you, listen, I just got to go tell the big man over there that I'm about to start paying off some of those debts. Then we can get out of town without him getting too nervous about me being gone. You know, we're on we're good grounds. He likes me. I like him. We're good pals, you know. We're pals. Ah, I mean, you said the cows are pals. I, said, I don't know many pals who have that many. Sure. You can say college chicken. You go Colonel Mines on our friend right before we enter the door. It's normal for a man who lost his father at a young age. <laughs> Panucci, Panucci, relocation and transports. Wise guys. Joe Pesci and my cousin Minnie's Gabagoon Incorporated. Uh, Mr. Paul, I need your sheet. I need to know something about you. How good are you with fast talk? Uh, Well, actually, unfortunately, and this is how it works. He has 50 fast talk, so it actually is a hard difficulty to s just scope him out. Or was it 70 where that happens? I'll look that up real lickety-dang split. Shouldn't take a moment. Gotta go and sneeze first. Hachu! Hachu! There we go. Intelligence and idea fumbles and criticals. No, no, I'm looking for saying hello to friends and kissing them. What's, 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 what's the smooch roll? Here we go. Charm, indicate, indicate. Here we go. For the vast majority of character will be below 50%. Uh, thus, the opposing skill is 50% or higher. Okay, cool, yeah. Yeah, you don't have no idea of what he's talking about. He might be on good terms. He might not be. Also, no, you're just saying it's Colonel Mines, so... Oh, my God. <laughs> Joey set a person on fire? Yes. <laughs> Yeah, the Death theme park really ties it all together. Tristan's just a, uh, a, a yeah, guy. Remember, Joey did light a serial killer on fire. Yeah, and Tristan, um, he has a part-time job, he, he walks his dog. dog, and he has a dog, yeah. His, his... Oh, and he's part of the School of Beautification, yeah. Handsome. You make your way into the into this beautiful Goodfellas movement and, t and storage companies. Reception area. Behind the desk sits a stout secretary who looks like she could probably pick you up if she wanted to. Although those arms don't say the same. Oh, would you look at that? It's Mr. Prospero coming back. You had asked for extensions, Mr. Prospero, or do you have business with the boss? He tries to look as important as he can as he just straight up says, "I think I got some good news for the boss. I need to. S I got some good news for the boss. I just need to see him for a moment." All right, I'll go and get him. You just, you just stay here for a moment. Hey, Louie! Go, uh, uh, Mr. Prospero says he, he says he, he says he's got business with the boss. Go ahead and have a seat in the next room, darlings. Go ahead into the next room then. She's like, over there to her left, which is your right, which is our north. Oh, you have to actually walk to the door. You can't yeah, yeah. just go through the wall. Huh? It's actually kind of a cool thing. That's cu I like it though. That's cute. All right, I got a little uh, question for you, Mister uh, Prospero. 
And Prospero walks up. He's like, listen, I got I got this. And he takes out that letter that he has. And he holds it out. You just you just show your boss. You just show your boss this and everything's going to be okay. He's gonna, I'm going to be making a lot of bank soon. I'm sure he wants in on it. This big man just snatches out of his head. This guy, by the way, is, is, a, is a brick. That is to say, he has a build point. And he just looks at it for a while and he goes, Yeah, okay, I'll, I'll give it a look. He walks into an office where a fancy, fancy black man is sitting behind a desk with his feet kicked up on the table. You're sitting here for a moment. What do you do? Uh, wh whatever you do in the waiting room. I'm just sitting in the chair, just kind of like feeling how comfy the chair is. Am I just is sneaking out the window because he's still in the chair? I am very calmly looking out the window. So what do you... I'm in the vehicle, I'm probably. So I'm looking out the window. Okay, cool. Muttering to myself about Prosper bringing the letter as an IOU to gangsters. You can roll me a psychology check as you examine the conversation that happens behind closed doors. Because it is a glass office. Like, even the doors are made of glass, so... Marvelous. Let's see. Uh, Frank Gangster does not have the necessary skills to be difficult about this. Cool! Oh, here's his name. It's, it's His name is Frank Fellini. Marvelous. I don't know why his token doesn't have his name, but there you go. So the conversation starts with him, like, being like, oh, he's going to pay up. Okay, that's cool. That's cool. Nodding, nodding, smiling. Letter gets handed over. He takes a look at the letter. Kind of reads it. Rubs his nose. And he starts frowning. And the lower he goes, like, he starts going, oh, no, no, oh, no, 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 mm -hmm. Shaking his head. Folds it up. Puts it in his jacket pocket. Reaches under his desk, pulls out a Tommy gun, and throws it at the guy. Uh, you want? hand the letter as like an IOU to gangsters, my friend. Uh, it's already done. The door ah, swings yes. open. Louis steps through. He points it at you. It's a Tommy gun, by the way. It's got one of those. It's got one of those barrel drums, just just in case you want it to be a full gangster. It goes, all right, boys. But Bus just told me that uh, he wants to have a little chit chat with you. Yeah. Whoa, 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 whoa! It's just uh, it's, things are fine, right, guys? It's, it's a real well, deal. Well, noisy for a chit chat. I mean. By the way, because I forgot to put it on the the handout, the handout, the piece of paper does have like a watermark on it from Ford Industries, because you know. I don't know when paper per watermarks were invented. I don't care. It looks fancy as hell. <laughs> but you have like a... Yeah, man. That letter was as legit as you could tell without making proper rules and investigations. One and only Ford. Well, uh... I guess we should follow the instruction of the man with the gun. We should try and talk him out of it. Why not us? He has a very itchy trigger finger by the looks of it. Like, you hear the constant click-click of his finger, like, tapping the trigger. The guy ha next to Hank, by the way, also, like, reaches into his jacket pocket to grab something. Hank, I know you like your squire, but please don't be too aggressive. <laughs> Hank, uh, dusts himself off. I, I I just have a notepad, pad of paper, just no weapon. Oh no no no! You're staying out of this one. Boss told me to get bring over Prospero, but you guys. And the the, the Thompson does have like a visible hammer on it, right? Uh, because I imagine that he would like click the hammer as like you know, pumps the shotgun and the shell falls out like an idiot moment. Claret, yeah, the, the... We're talking the typewriter, and yeah, it, it, just, it just shoots. Yeah, there's no reason to sign that. But it does have that little thing on top that you can pull back, right? I think that's to prime the uh, drum. Cool. Well, that's what he does. He he he, he just says, you know, but boss didn't ask nothing about you. 
You guys ain't uh, involved in any of this for long. All right. Okay, wait. To my knowledge, at least. Yes. To my knowledge, him doing that and just being arrested for it, the dude has actually been arrested for things like that. Listen, this guy's not very smart. <laughs> I mean, he, he he has 60 intelligence, and he's ugly as a as a as a brick, but. And I've taken position to cold cock the thug next to me. <laughs> All right, you know what? Go ahead. What, whatever, whatever skill you think would uh, would help you figure out if this guy just fuck it, fuck himself over. Go for it. Oh, okay. Yeah, he probably like there's already a bullet in there. So what whatever is going to happen ain't going to be great. Maybe he'll shoot two bullets, maybe the one bullet explode. I don't know, man. But that definitely ain't safe. Anyway, Mr. Louis last threat before he's he's had enough of of having a chit-chat said he would like to take you somewhere where it won't be as messy. After all, Mr. Fellini likes his carpet nice and clean. I think we should talk this out. Just, you know, listen to the man with, with the machine gun. Well, the bar's in your court, guys. What do you think you should do about this? <clears throat> your pulp heroes. Live it up. Someone okay, take Prospero from us. Roll me some charm. We should try to approach him, and 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 not get a get his guard up. You can definitely push that roll, but if you don't, he's just gonna start shooting you down because you're like, no woman, scary female. <laughs> oh no, it's the female. <laughs> Marvelous. You, you make your approach, you get right next to him, what do you do? Handsome. Let's let's fucking go time, kids. Let's fucking go time. I need to give good old Paul a, a different uh, skill set because the one I gave him doesn't work. Which is to say that I gave him resourceful, and it's not really fair if he has a skill that the players have. <laughs> Alright, kids. You don't roll initiative, because you just fucking go time, baby. Uh, no one here ha I mean, I guess he has a gun drawn, but you, you, you charmed him, so he doesn't take that plus 50 initiative to just start pushing you full of bullets. Okay, I need to... Previous round. Oh. Sure, whatever. <laughs> Dorothea. Your your time to shine. Show him what you got. Huh. Uh, he's going to. Well, you know what? I'm going to say that a charm means that he also doesn't really know how to dodge, so he gets a penalty on his dodge check. He's like, oh, pretty lady. <laughs> She's pretty lady. Uh, you cannot push combat rolls. <laughs> uh, you quickly discover that his face is like a brick. With how big he is, and ow, hurt, oof, ow. Marianne. Ah. Uh. All right. So what, what what I wanted to do is that uh, since uh, Thea is looking away from me and I'm looking at you know the big guy with the gun, I want to pull out my camera and use the flash to blind. Uh, <laughs> good old. All right, good baby. Thing. I guess that would be a photography. <laughs> As you quick draw and flat and, and and perform, our, I guess a fighting maneuver is what it would be. You know, you guys uh, really ought to roll, roll. 
roll your boat gently downstream. I'll, I'll push it. Let me try pushing. I'll let you push it, but you might damage your camera in the process. Uh, uh, I don't know. I'll, I'll just... <laughs> uh, I can do one thing or two things? Oh, you can do... I'll, I'll, you just say what you want to do, and I'll tell you how much of that you can do. Right, Generally, I'll think like push. one action. Like one thing you can do. I, uh, I'll just flat, try to flash and tell the boss where we're going. Uh, the, 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 the B2 brawler. He has a gun out. But, you know, you don't really shoot when someone's standing in front of you. That's like a great way to have someone pull that gun like up to your face or shoot the ceiling. I would love to see him try to do it, though. Uh, lady, 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 lady. He's gonna come in for a brawl move. How do you respond? Oh. Uh, I'm gonna try to dodge that. You need to roll an extreme success, because he rolled amazing. What are the options for uh, dodging? Uh, you can dodge, in which case you just have to match his roll, or you can fight back, in which case you have to exceed his roll, in which case you have to roll a better extreme success than he does. Oh, I did try dodging this time. Huh! <laughs> You get some mickety smacked. Actually, no. I, I'm, I'm gonna reroll that for one reason. That's because this makes it a hell of a lot easier to do. No, I wanna. Okay, I need to learn how to use this thing. This is just for you because I'm nice. Okay, cool. In that case, he just whiffs it. He tries to hit you with the butt, but you're too busy fighting each other. Prospero, on the other hand, is like, mmm. Oh, mmm. We know what it's gonna do. Uh, Hank, you're planning to hit this guy next to you, right? Or something? Yes. Well, in that case, Mr. Paul is going to go and tackle it. Go and essentially go for, go for a brawl maneuver. Fight a maneuver. Give you a bonus die. Give you some advantage here. Like, who? Nice. Where the hell is your fighting? Oh, there's your fighting. Brawl. B -b 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 brawl. Fighting maneuver. Unarmed. Ugh. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, I think you could spend 10 luck to avoid a fumble, but I think it's hilarious that he kind of just biffs it. He tr he, he's trying. He's under a lot of stress. Frank notices this all going on. He's just leaning back like, gotta let the, the mooks sort this one out. Hank. Right. I, tur I, I, tur I turn to the gang gang gangster. Does he have his gun out, you said? Uh, no. The, he, he was reaching into his pocket when, when things started to escalate. I am going to gra uh, I'm going to uh, grapple his wrist, and then I can just. I mean, you can in Call of Cthulhu, it's implied you can take our character without necessarily killing them or knocking them out. But you know, go for it. Also, in Pop Cthulhu rules, if you if you take out half of so of a mook's hit point, like anyone who isn't a major villain or something, uh, they fall unconscious because movies work like that. Wait, he's really close. Can I grab and headbutt him with my helmet head? Yeah, sure. F fucking let him have it. Your he I I'll say that your helmet counts as a club, because, Jesus Christ, it's a middle helmet. Uh, do I roll brawl? Or, uh... Roll me brawl. Go over to your combat page and click the club. Alright. Click brawl. Show me the goods. Oh my goodness. Can you... Why are you guys I all... I, I have a... I like that I have... That's like my highest skill. It's like driving. This guy takes out a little blackjack and goes, Oh, man. Mr. Prospero, when the boss says he wants to talk to you, you don't say no. He has advantage because Paul fucked it up so bad. Oh, God, Paul, you idiot. Why, how did you, why did you roll a fumble? Remember when you died in a flashback? <laughs> Holy shit. Paul, my man. <laughs> this is... This is like one of those moments where characters like punch at the speed of sound, and they block every move anyway. Paul's on the ground, puts up his arms, blocks the blackjack that's about to clock him. Um, there's a guy in the office over here. Where is this guy? Where's this... Oh, there's this color from... It's just that the... The, the turn counter isn't updating. So, whatever. He's like, hey. Hey! And he points at you and he's like, hey! Uh, the door gets locked behind you. This lady's gonna dive under that desk and leave this oh. combat encounter. Dorothea, would you like to unfuck the mess that's been happening around you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would. I, you know, knives are still kind of a problem. 
Knives count as a special kind of weapon that I have to add to your sheet. But they call it this brawl, yes. Brawl functions for most weapons that are easy to use, like non-specialties, such as swords and flails, like weird things. Swords are, not specialty? swords are specialty. Hence why they don't fall in the brawl, I mean. Get him. Get him. He's gonna... Ooh, he's gonna go for a dodge, though. Ooh, he just have to succeed. Regular success. Roll me that damage. And that's five. Man takes five. Oh, wait. Uh, by the way, you can't... Here's something I'm going to teach you. I want you to click... Alt-click, and you can target someone. And that lets you apply the damage. Just... Anyway, you inflict five points of damage. And he goes... Argh! He's almost... He's looking woozy. He's looking woozy. All that blood's making him woozy. Marianne. So I assume my camera's going to flank, so I just let it go and it'll just drop. Yeah, yeah, y your uh, camera's safe. Alright, baseball bat. Plus also, it's not a three action system. I would be perfectly fine if you take out your, put your camera away and take it out. Take out a bat, like, don't worry about it. Focus on the cinematics. Yeah, so first, I gotta alt click him. Alt click him, yes. Alright, so he's alt click. Roll uh, me the goods. Wait. Okay, cool. Uh, Dower Gangster, you have a bonus to your uh, you have advantage, by the way, because he is outnumbered. Okay. He's gonna dodge. Oh no, he's so big he can't dodge good. Roll me brawl. Click the brawl button. Okay. Wait. Advantage isn't clicked then. No, no, it's outnumbered. You want? Okay. Oh heck! Go ahead and smack him. Unconscious. So, so I click the... Why are there buttons for magic shield? I sh Jesus yeah, Christ. Uh, you don't have to click anything, I think. Uh, no. Why does it not have any... Yeah, it doesn't roll damage for some reason. Weird. What a weird situation. Is your club set up right? Yeah? It's just being silly. There. Nice. Oh, there we go. Inflict pain. Click it. Click it. Inflict pain. Where is the it's at the bottom. <laughs> in the Babe Ruth Slugger box. Under the seven that you rolled. Under. Yeah, I don't see it. In the bottom of the chat box. I don't know. I see seven. Well, I guess I have to inflict the pain. Well, uh, the gangster is down to... So it's, a, it's a barely anything. And he falls unconscious as you just smack him real good like. You, you clonk him on the head. Kink. There we go. Unconscious. Ugh. Oh, cool. I like that it says not Marcus dead, but Marcus defeated. Handsome. Mr. Prospero. Mr. Prospero's up, uh, up on the ground, but he's going to... Once he, he sees that behind him, he's like, you know what? I'm going to uppercut. <laughs> okay, Paul. First, you have to aim at someone in order to attack them. Thank you. Uppercut. Fail. Kind of looks like the most powerful oh, cool. Oh, this is what this little menu does. This allows me to set that he's dodging. Okay, cool. So this guy's like a, a crime god. <laughs> <laughs> Level 99 boss. Hank. Go ahead. Alt click the guy to aim. Uh, oh, you just alt click. Oh, okay, that. Oh, cool. All right. I'm. I will headbutt you, Nay. And. He's outnumbered, by the way. Don't forget that. Yeah. Makes sense. Woo. Okay, he's gonna dodge. I'll stay with this advantage because you forgot to include that. Oh no! <laughs> Show us the damage. Roll damage. Oh, it's at the bottom. Oh, that's a one hit, one hit, one blow. Bam! I just, I, I grab him by his little suit and I just tonk him right now. <laughs> you hear that? They hear that Team Fortress 2. Ting! I kind of wanted to toss him through this window to, for our escape. 
but... Sure, I'll allow you to make that make that the move that you make. I, I, okay, I grab him by his suit, twist him to the window, and then say, we well, must be the haste the exit, and smash him through the window. He, he rolls out, he, he, he falls backwards, like he bends backwards into it, and then he rolls over, and then he's flat, face flat on the ground. You have a clear shot to your car to get the hell out of here if you want to. We have an exit, my friends. I have supplied one. Before this happens, a mook shows up behind. <gasps> Marianne, Mary Maple. He's like, you ain't make it out of here alive, Bucks. You don't, you, don't, you don't mess with Louie without messing with me. Yeah. Oh man, I'm so glad that I get to use a gangster voice. <laughs> oh no, he's got a new voice cap. That means he's in business. Mary, would you like to fight back? Uh, Which means you get to fighting back is like counterattacking. Uh, you have to exceed his success rate, but you get to hit him if you succeed. Sure. Fight back. Click that and roll for the attack. Okay. Oh wait, if you click fight back, you have to select what you're using. Cool. I can't. I think it's because I clicked on something. No. Click the button for brawl. It was a brawl. Oh fuck! <laughs> Bella knocks one guy out, goes for the swing, and bam! You hit him by accident on the back. Oh gosh, you have to rules a constitution check. He resists. Well, actually, he doesn't resist falling unconscious because he's a mook. They just go when they go. You take his newsboy cap. <laughs> No, no, Bella hits this guy on the head. The thing bounces back. The bat's behind her, and this guy runs into it. You ain't gonna make it out of your old cone? Alright. At this point, you have a clear run, and you make your way out of this place. Eventually, as you make your way out, you hear a bunch of gangsters behind you yelling at you like, Hey, what the hell do you think you're doing? And they get in their cars. Uh, by the way, to the south, there is like a big garage section, and that opens up, and like a couple of cars come driving out after you. Hanging. Into the sea. <laughs> Marvelous. All right, kids. You've escaped the gangsters, who clearly don't like the fact that you are planning to do something with Mr. Ford over in Detroit. Or it's fairly. Just didn't like the fact that he was handed like a letter for possible payment as like an IOU. It's kind of weird that a gangster would not be interested in money, huh? Well, they put tons of money on posts. I guess that's true. I always, I always go with the whole, you know, this isn't a tick. I gotta go to the bathroom, by the way, for a moment, so... Okay, I, I'll, I'll do the same. Do it. Let's go. Just, I like the idea that the guy, like, punches Hill, and he just grabs both of his wrists, and then headbutts him through the window. That was yeah, most I'm unwise for him. That the fights are more shady. I mean, Zala, have you seen how big a baseball bat is? Yeah, because I'm using a bowie knife. And I do one D4 plus one for each other one. That's some weird Apparently tabletop logic there. Apparently hard to hit with bats. Well, maybe blades will do, like, the bleeding damage. Maybe. Also, I don't know how much combat I have with that. I do, because I assume that... Uh, Hell, be, be crazy with it like I did, Zal. Say you're, like, stabbing him in the hand. Well, I did. I slashed oh. him twice, twice, and then I stabbed him again. Be more visceral to stab him in the hand. You don't stab, you slash. You visceral stab and slap the guy with whatever you do. Put it simply, friend. Cut their fingers off and before they can shoot them. By the way, just saying, uh, when they drove into the donut, I literally imagined them, like, smashing their car inside the donut hole. There's a thing where you can just summon a gosh dang fruit cart. <laughs> oh, the 
the corn. I'm back. Welcome back. So this is Missed kind of why I, did, why I did it that early. <laughs> Perfect. God, that just make me think though of that Yu-Gi-Oh thing. It's like, God dang, Tristan was was very normal, wasn't he? Yeah, especially in season zero when he was just a guy. Also, for that Taya thing, the more you know, how Taya was in the manga, you know what that makes me think of? Was Taya sort of just kind of like Lois Lane? I'm baby back, baby. Gamer. The gamer girl. Marvelous. So. Kids and cadets, is Battle back? Yeah. Marvelous. You, uh, let's go on then for a little bit. As you sit in yonder, wh where am I? Why is my Why is my thing blank? That's cool. My thing is just blank now. That's hilarious. I love it. I hate it. I'm very upset. Where am I in this mysterious void? <laughs> in this mysterious Joko? Point is, kids, you're at the edge of town for a moment. Paul sits in the back, recommend, and just says the obvious to an extent. All right, that uh, didn't go as expected, huh? I no, it did not. Every single thing that just happened. <sighs> yeah, it didn't go as expected for me. I expected nothing. No combat with gangsters today. Hey, anyone got like a dollar or something? You ask for dollars. The, the, I, the, uh, hey, there's a hot dog stand over there. I thought maybe we'd buy a bite. You know, calm down a little bit. I know. We're still at gangster red line. We are not in the position to be shopping for hot dogs. <laughs> I am looking at my uniform. Listen, listen. It'll be fine. We, sh we should probably just go go to our houses, pick up some basic supplies, head over to Detroit, wait for them to cool down, and when we come back with a successful case, a bit of money in our pockets, we can explain the whole situation. Like, no one's dead, they're just a little injured. They, they, it's probably fine if we just, you know, lay low for a while. Outside of town. Ah, oh, you're... <laughs> See, I told you, it's, a, it's, it's good to have a little Mew after such a panicked set of moments. Is my vehicle alright? Be like 20 or something. It was a while ago. What about it? You ever heard of men in cramps and broken ankles? Uh, you got shot in a car, right? No, he was doing this. No. <laughs> this is like, everyone looks at you blankly. So you're saying I that guess. if we go and get a sandwich, we're going to get Franz Ferdinanded? Maybe. Or would Maybe. that be Franz Ferdinanced? I hate you. <laughs> oh, come on. Just trying to lighten the mood a little bit. Listen. Listen, listen. We should... We listen. How about we go past all your houses, we pick up some basic stuff, we add to the toilet. Like I said, once we've been out of town for a little while, they'll calm down a little bit. We got a good reason to be there anyway. Maybe we can call up Henry and see if he pays for the hotel or something. Well, I mean, no good scoop doesn't come without danger. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. Can you go get a hot dog or something? Yes. Yeah, it really leave me a little hungry. I'll, 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 I'll get that hot dog. I don't want a party. I want a little extra. Hot dog. I want mustard and onions. Thank you. 
Bella, you head on over to the hot dog guy, who is exactly what you'd expect. He is long enough that his arms are hot dogs. Mm. Oh my god, he, he's in a bug sack. <laughs> this fine African-American fellow uh, says hello. Hey there, ma'am. How may I help you? Here, uh, here at Conroy's Hot Dogs, you can get any dog you want. I still can't, but... Uh, ignore it. Uh, yeah. But, uh, I will have two dogs, one with onion, onion oh and just one... You know, Listen, just... I have to say this, because I'm, I can't stop giggling at it. This is the weird alternative 1930s, where the insane technology of, of equal suffrage has been invented. That's never gonna happen. Not in a hundred years. Wow, we are ahead of our time. Really. <laughs> Jack, we gotta. <laughs> I just love that line. So good. This is Herman the Monster guy. Man, it's such a good thing. Anyway, you, you said uh, two two mustard dogs with onions. Yeah. Any else? Yeah. Um, uh, just pile stuff off mine while we're here. Mind if I ask why you were driving so quickly? You might get a ticket with a <laughs> going fast like that. Uh, uh, we were just, you know, testing out the wheels on uh, my friend's car. Ooh, it is a very nice good. little automobile. It that's uh, a that's a new good. that's a new one, ain't it? The new Ford one. Yeah. Ah, uh, that's a uh, nice thing. Heard good things about it, but <laughs> I don't really need one. I just got my little car to me. Like I say, why, why let a car do the work when you can walk there? There is no speed limit on a motorway from like 1965. We're just we're just gonna assume that it's a bunch of crooked cops who are like, hey, don't get out a little quick there, buddy. Oh no, I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm just saying that's that's crazy. Yeah, man. I, to be fair, cars didn't go that fast, and you know. The first uh, speed limit. Twelve miles per hour. Well, they really overshot that one, huh? <laughs> that's like, wow, that's like twenty kilometers. Mm. A little faster than the bike. <laughs> this guy hands you a delicious set of hot dogs, Bella. Hell yeah. Mmm, they smell so nice. But to be fair, you are standing right right next to the device that makes this stuff, so the smell's fresh. I cut, I grow and cut the onions myself. That's why I give it a little extra personal touch. And uh, two pops. Two uh, pops. What kind of pops are you looking for? <laughs> for colas. Mm-hmm. Right, that's been picking up a lot too. I sell these like hotcakes. It takes out two bottles of Coca-Cola. Uh, you need a, you need an opener, or you got one on you? For the uh. caps. I mean, I think it's got a knife. I can pop those off. No. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's what you think. Of, it's like, yeah, I think it's got, it's, it's got a knife. How, how about you roll me an, an, an appearance check? Hard difficulty. Uh, well, I mean... Two cocaine cola. Wait, so should I hit the... Uh, appearance, and then set that to the to app. Oh, oh, wait. Here's hard. Okay, that didn't do that right. Nah, it was just it. It was just to see if he was like gonna give you like a Coca Cola branded uh, bottle opener for free or not. Nah. He he wishes you the best and uh, uh, a drive safe. You'd be ashamed to see uh, such such a lovely set of friends get injured. <laughs> uh, at the, you have to yourself. By the way, at this point, he, he does say that as Paul gets out of the car, starts dusting himself off. And, like, part of the carpet comes off because, you know, he flubbed that roll so bad. <laughs> also, the guy with the helmet. You wouldn't. By the way, that that's not the guy driving, right? Because I don't think he can see good with that helmet of his. Uh, so surprisingly, he can see pretty well, as from what I can tell. Well, considering his car is in decent shape, I'll have to believe you. <laughs> I'm afraid I circumstances don't allow me to otherwise. I have a policy on the front seat of the door. By the way, are you a local boss tonight, or uh? Ah, uh, no, I'm actually uh, you know, live in New York. I'm from Hollywoodland, but you know, 
Yeah, how it is. That kind of Ooh. Could, may, I, may I have seen you in a movie or something? No, no, no. I'm just a, just a normal person from Hollywood land. Ah. Uh. <laughs> well, you enjoy yourself for out time then, Missy. And don't forget, Conroy's dogs taste good like a hot dog should. Sorry, I just wanted to see what the dude of Vance looked like. I really appreciate the fact that I still have a blank void in front of me. <laughs> yeah, for some reason it's just not loading the maps anymore. I don't know why. It's, it's okay. I don't need the maps right now. Maybe this will help. We, we, I we can draw a nice little hot dog stand with that. Okay? No, no, I can't see anything. Like, the the whole map and the grid, everything is, is just gone now. Yeah, it's all gray for me, too. Give me, like, a second. This is going to help. Also, I gave you the necessary <laughs> video for whenever uh, Theo pulls out a knife. <laughs> oh, yeah. He it briefly really turns off Rayleigh. Really. He's got a knife. <laughs> this is, like, the idea of, uh... <laughs> I was like, hey, that sort of thing has a knife. And he just, like, asked for the... Gangster blood coated knife to pop open the pops. Which she's currently cleaning. Well, nah, Marie wouldn't tell Theo that she's gonna use it for that. She was like, hey, can I borrow your knife for a second? <laughs> you just watch him you break it on the. With what knife? She just broke it! <laughs> it's like you pull out a second knife! Actually, legit, can you go like dick tabletop make the person for a second and like tell Bella to roll skill check when the popping the popping the code Listen, if this if if Bella does start popping, I will have her roll like brawls to see if she breaks the knife. <laughs> or she like cuts herself with the advanced Bella, knife. Do you feel lucky? <laughs> <laughs> this is a Bowie knife. This is just a normal knife. So Bella, are you are you gonna pop those 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 knife pops? Uh no, I'll, I'll just Pop it off like a counter or off the door of the car or something. <laughs> wow. I'm picking fights with Hank. Hank of the Hill. I, I like the idea Hank of Hill. of you you put it against the door and it pops off and Hank just hears this king 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 as his car sense is tingling. I uh so I get jump with the advantage plus two on Bella now. <laughs> Pure <laughs> rage. As, wait, I just, actually I'm gonna just see what happens. Uh, I just gave a gift. This is, uh, how Hank's feeling. <laughs> Holy shit, that's extreme success for jumping. <laughs> so, I'm sorry, I had to see. you flash that over and you catch the bottle before it goes off. <laughs> <laughs> Would you dare to actually use Hank's car when screaming about being a unicorn? <laughs> Bella's just trying to make us kill her. No, Wait, I'm trying to open the cola. I thought your name was Marianne, not Martha Hall. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. Uh, that's an ancestor. I, I'm seeing it, yeah. Resemblance is uncanny. Oh, God. Anyway. I'll go back to Jack Jack. <sighs> my bottle opener. And you got stopped. Oh my goodness, you guys are such weenie ling weenies. No one believes in fun. <laughs> nah. I'm gonna quick draw. Mm. It's a fun one. Alright, kids. Alright, kids. Where, where? We're gonna go past your houses to pick up your things. What do your houses look like? Let's start off with uh, who would want to go to their home first? Who's like, I, w I need to get my stuff first. Like, it's important. All right, lady, it's all my good stuff. Where do you live? Like, w the car pulls up to your house. What the hell do they see? I live in Beacon Hill, which is a northeastern part of Boston. Uh, cool. It's a cobblestone, pretty nice area, nothing special. But I got, I have one of the upper apartments near Boston that I'm purchasing. <sighs> which I believe is after the discount. It, it, I don't care. I, I'll allow, do you have a picture of, like, Boston, like, the university just fades into view in the 1930s? <laughs> Point is, you, you live near the university, and, um, yep. well, go and get your stuff. Yep, I'm a go. I'm going to pick up some traveling money. Uh, <clears throat> Considering you're an ex-spy, I assume you have a bug out bag. Oh, no, uh, I was getting to that. I'm going to go to my bookshelf and pull a couple of books out of the way and pull out my uh, secondary knife. Oh, my God. <laughs> this is the backup knife. <laughs> yeah, 
yeah, you see, this is the real knife. Uh, get a couple clips of ammo because we now have gangsters out here. Sound of course. Um, picking up my camera because we both have one. And I have a small bag of an old spy kit. Marvelous. Mom, when I get those cleaned up at some point, hey, maybe you can find a machine shop in Detroit. Oh, snap. I think I still have a machine shop. <laughs> it's right there. Hank, can you, can you fix this umadubla umlogata for me? My brain? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how I'll do that. Baby, Claire, don't do it. Don't do it. Shark bait. No. Chomp. Also, here's what the area looks like. Sure, fucking. Im oh, that looks pretty nice. Respectable area. I like how respectable it looks. Also, like your apartments, like high up. Uh, all right, everyone who's sitting outside, what are you all doing? Waiting for your friend to come back. It's kind of a weird neighborhood. There's lots of university students. Uh, well, I'm, I'm just kind of like, yeah. Cool. Around, be like, you know, just. Crazy, like how much debt could one man have with the mafia? Like, listen, it's long? it's not it. Listen, it's not that much. Well, it, it's a like a couple, thing. like a couple hundred maybe, but you know, five hundred dollars would fix that, right? When they try to kill you, you have gained enough debt, as to my estimates. Well, well, he wasn't trying to kill me yesterday, so. Yeah, so apparently, today he's so. going with the debt push the line. Uh, all right, all right, I get you. I get you. I'm financially irresponsible. Cool, f amazing. Love it. Love to hear that from a protege. <laughs> Don't worry. Protege is a strong word. Says Spy lady, you you come outside. Roll me spot hidden. Yeah, yeah, I'm okay. I'm not terribly tall. I'm good for a third grader. There's a. I I like that you're a <laughs> thirty-five. Um, this person over there, he's walking around with this sheet of, this little, you're like, you're, you're intently looking around at all times, I assume, because you're, like, yeah. on, on bug out mode. There's a guy on the other side of the street who's walking around with, like, a sheet of paper, might be a photo, might be a description, but he's, like, asking people around about it. Like, he walks up to random people and just goes, he points at it, and then he goes to another person, points at it. This scruffy looking fella. Who's wearing a he's wearing a big big coat, big warm coat by the way. Uh, who wants to say what start what 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 time of year it is? Spring. Um... Cool, it's spring. So, all right, his coat's not completely out of place. Maybe he just doesn't want to change quite yet. Point is, he's he's walking around with this. He, he's clean shaven, but he's just a little bit scruffy. Like his hair's a bit messy. Coat's a bit eh. You walk up to him, what do you do? Oh, no, 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 I just I walked into some university kids and they asked me to, uh, to hold out this flyer for people for the for local swimming team competition that's in a few days. And he holds it out to you and it, says, it just says, like, swimming competition next Friday. All right, well, that's it. Yeah. Well, I mean, I heard they're pretty good. Mm-hmm. Come back in town and I can show you around or something. Oh, I, I'm sure they'd appreciate it. Hey, I, I gotta go now. Have, have a good day. God bless. You too. Unless you have anything to add, I'm just going to assume you go to the next house. Yeah, I'm just gonna let us be. Paul will not take long because <laughs> he doesn't have much to pick up. It's just some backwater house that he quickly goes to. Hank, your house is next. Where do you live? What does your house look like? What do people see when they pull up to it? They sh they see a, ver a very run-down shack and a garage mm -hmm. that looks completely not, like incorrect next to the home. Immaculate is the term you're looking for. <laughs> yeah, there's, yeah, there's basically a, like a run-down looking like, shack, and then right next to it is like, like this actually well-kept... 
Hank, there's an angry looking lady in front of your house. Why? Is there a visitor? Her name is Karen. Oh, it's a Karen, there's all right. A sign on the front of the house that says no, no, no trespassing or visitors. Well, Hank, maybe you have to address this. Not even by appointment, by the way. Hank, Hank steps out of his vehicle and uh, approaches the woman. What's it, who's the Hank, this has gone too far! She points her finger at you. She wields it like like someone would wield. I don't know how would you wield something like you a flail. Like she constantly waves it at you. Hank, I've been telling you for months. The homeowners association does not appreciate the fact that your house looks like a slum. It looks like a house, and that is all that I need. Your garage is up to code, Hank. Your garage, but the rest looks like a abandoned factory. It looks terrible, Hank. Oh my, Hank! You you get someone to clear the weeds. Just clean it up already for once. My housing value goes down because of your stinky dump. <coughs> Hank does not have time for this. <laughs> you push past her then, or something, or? Uh, Hank sort of assures her with like a. Thumbs up, because it seems like Steve cannot read him sometimes. He's not sure why. Mm. Says, I will make sure to take care of these requests after I return from my trip. You, you, you're going on a trip. You're going on a trip. Where are you going? You live in this, and you're going on a trip, and you're not going to take care of the things that matter right now? She yells at you. <laughs> yes, I am going on a tri trip, and I do not have time okay. for your... I just gave a gift that was for <laughs> God dang freaking Karen over here. Exactly. Well, with more finger waggling and also more 1930s fashion. Hank ignores her and just is like, I I'm taking care of it, I assume. Yeah, it's just here's some money. Everyone gets to watch her like yell and yell and yell. Well, Hank eventually comes out with a bag of stuff. Is there anything of note in, in your collection of goods, Hank, that you would like to specify that you take with you? Like, I don't know, some item of particular importance, of personal importance or something? A very nice wrench. Lovely. Good wrench. Also, I assume that you have your, your bag of clothes and you have a toolbox, and one is bigger than the other. Take a guess. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, yeah. He, he takes out this very large toolbox, and what you can only assume is, like, a, you know, one of those takeaway bags, but it's... Knapsacks. Yeah, nap sack. <laughs> like a stick to. That's what I need. But, but it, it's probably like one of those nice, big old monkey wrenches. You could use it as a great club. Finally, we go to Marianne's place. Marianne, what does your place look like when the car rolls up? It's a, uh, it's a, a studio apartment. Ooh. Yeah, small. Yeah, kind of, kind of empty-ish on the inside because it's. it's kind of temporary at the moment uh, and uh, when she goes inside she's gonna get her uh, well some extra film uh, pick up her gun because she didn't actually bring that with her you know so, uh, a book on occultism and like you know occult studies ish and also like a similar book but it's more like you know Fantasy occultism. You know, to... Reference materials. Yes, reference. Like, because we're talking ghosts. You need to know what kind of salt you can use. Can you use iodized salt? Or can't you? Mm. God, it depends on what kind of ghost, bro. Can you use sea salt? Must it be refined in this? Mm, gotta know, gotta know. Only. Is it bath salt? <laughs> Does it have to be caver girl bath water? <laughs> ah, a lovely studio apartment. As she come back outside, it's beginning to drizzle a bit. Paul is still like anxious to just get going already. Uh, here's a question I want to ask you: How much more do you want to do, or do you want to like roll up the session for now? Since it's getting a bit late. I'm gonna leave that up to you guys. Like, real quick, like, it's up to them. Uh. It has been a while. Yeah, take a level. Excellent. 
that I'm not going to end the cliffhanger immediately. And instead, we're going to go to something else. Ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba -ba. We're driving down the road, going to Detroit. It's going to be a day or two. Because Detroit is quite a distance away. Well, to be fair, to, to be fair, you can technically read. A, there are books that you can read, especially on occultism, that you can actually gain like skill knowledge from, which I like. Takes some weeks though. Takes some weeks to get to get to the bottom of those books, but hey. Oh, you already have like fifty occultism, so a lot of the stuff is like, yeah, I, I kind of know that already. Yeah, I, I figured my stuff is more like introductory level, like you know, what is a ghost and what is. Ghosts are dead people. Chapter done. Why? Why is? Oh, that's why. Okay, I was wondering why. Why is there spook tree on this map? And that's the reason for that. As you make your way down the road, you go through the yonder forests between the two places you are. You're gonna have to stay at a motel somewhere part way through, but for now, it's a nice day. That's gotten grimier and grimier. You've been driving straight into that storm, and now it's getting gr more than grimy enough that I can tell you. That your car headlights are on and you need them. It is just hammering outside in terms of weather. Perilous weather before us. Paul is kind of mopey because it's a bit cold in the car. It's all clammy. I don't think it was good feeding for hey, Claire, my coffee. Coffee. gift. I think is uh, Hank's battle space. It's tool time. <laughs> Look at that wrench. So big. I need some like really goofy Latin night phrase for something about it's tool time. Tool time. Dun, dun, da, 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 da. Hank, will you roll me some drive auto? Because in your headlights, in the dark, a flash of lightning, a lady, you're gonna hit her. Okay, now what? What you? What do you want me to roll? Drive auto, because you are driving straight at a lady. First, you see a standing figure in the flash of lightning. Then your flashlights, your your car lights, light her up. Yeah, I, just, I, I just I apparently button her down. Do you want to you want to push that roll? Yeah, I'm gonna push that roll. Oh my gosh! You succeed. Oh, I like that. Every time you every time you push, it's like a fraction. By the way, technically speaking, I think a oh no, push rolls are reroll. It's bonus dice that are only the tens. Okay, cool. Um, as you. Barrel towards her. You, 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 you're so used to this lackadaisical driving on this muddy road that you're like, nah. and then, oh no! Uh, oh, a lady. Paul like jumps up and goes, "Watch out!" And you just go, "Oh, oh, ah!" You manage to pull your wheel together. However, your car spins and spins until your your spot, your headlights like light her up from behind. Uh, the woman appears to be walking in a daze. She's pale, incredibly wet from all the rain. She's been walking in this for a while, clearly. And her, mm, she doesn't look good. By the circle builders themselves, a woman. Circle builders? <laughs> oh. Uh, let's go check her out. Alright, we get our umbrellas. Or and flashlight. Because it's night time. It is hella wet. By the way, if you if you wanna People, flashlights are so old, they're actually in Gaslight Cthulhu, which is like 1890. Like, damn, they're old, huh. flashlights. Huh. Yeah, so I assume you have a flashlight in my pocket belt. <laughs> yes, you have a flashlight, don't worry about it. It's like one of the... I, normally, you would ask for like a luck roll or like resourceful, but I'd be like, okay, you, of course you brought a flashlight, you have a bug out bag, you've got like the obvious stuff. You, th this woman, what do you do as you get out of the car? Okay, I'm gonna yell. Ma'am, are you okay? She turns around very, very slowly. We're a bit away from the city. Are you, are you lost? <laughs> this woman is thin, slightly gaunt looking. She has dark hair and arrestingly wide, pale gray, almost colorless eyes. When she turns around, you can tell that she has a big, big bruise on her forehead. Oh no, I'm gonna go in real quick and I'm gonna... What's your first aid, Bella? My first aid? Uh... Okay. What's the number? It's a five. <laughs> okay, I'm I'm assuming we'd know each other's skill levels. So you you have a vague idea what everyone could do, yes. Mine's four twenty eight. Wow, I'm actually worse at that. Uh mine's thirty nine. So I 
be like, okay, she's hurt. Uh, Mary, better go check her out. Hey, uh, for right, here. Paul has 15 yeah. first aid. Goddamn. To, be, to be fair, know. Paul has to patch himself up every once in a while because he gets roughed up by criminals. He's having a rough time. They're going with like slightly sunken eyes and you know looking all blur. Can 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 I you know see if something's up? I was gonna try and cold check while you you know ran over. You want okay cool. There's an so one of you tries to recall something about occultism. Is she is she a zombie or a ghost or is she a revenant? Is she going to attack you? Mm. In the meantime, Bella just runs at her. <laughs> okay, then I guess I'll do first aid. Run with some first aid. Uh, okay, cool. Good news. She's definitely bleeding, so she's probably not a skeleton. Also, all the flesh is kind of a dead giveaway, but you never know. Some skeletons wear people. That's what they do sometimes. Um, I'm going to need a psychology check, too. Yeah, yeah, I'm good with that. Not that good, though. She does have that shuffle to her, doesn't she? Uh, Bella, you managed to patch her up a little bit. She mutters at first, but seems to regain some some language. However, she is very cold. It is possible she's been in the... out in the... in this... This rain, by the way, is cold. You are far up north, and this rain is just icy. So, uh, your, while your first aid can help with that wound, it probably isn't going to help with the fact that she might suffer hypothermia soon. A blanket in the trunk. Yeah. Uh, I'll, go, I'll go grab that. We should also, you know, try to take her home. Or at least to a town. She hasn't said anything so far, so... By the way, yeah. Like do, a, do you know where where we are? Do you, do, do you know where your home is? Like, we're pretty far out. We're so you you wrap a blanket around her. You take her into the car. It's a bit cramped, but you can manage for now. We're body heat. She 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 mutters as she is now dry and a little bit warmer. Something about grandfather. As a crack of lightning strikes, um, yeah. good old Mr. Hank, in the distance you see a sign that says Gas and Cafe, 400 feet. <clears throat> ah, a stop for us. There we will find help. Okay, how about, uh, did you leave your car on when you stopped, or did you shut it down? What do you do? I left it running. Cool. I the car keep warm. That's a good idea, because this rain is so cold and, and lashes like whips. It would be dangerous to stop. The rain to stall the vehicle. I'll be cold. You know the weather. All right. Um. Let's see. So who's con who's taking care of the lady? I guess I will. Since, you know, I suppose it is. The person who's not taking care of the lady and is not driving can roll me a spot hint check. Yay! Not that great at this. <laughs> In the distance, you see, as you drive away, you see this light, this spotlight, like light, dance across the trees. You can't see where it's coming from because you drive too far away before you could make it out. But it looked like something that was looking for something. Vroom, vroom, vroom. You make your way over to the gas station. Up in the distance, a couple of lights loom up. It appears to be some sort of gas station, as well as a small diner. There's plenty of lights, and by the looks of it, a... Whoa! Hank almost has to make another check for that. But luckily, this one is not too hard to dodge. There's a large truck just parked in the middle of the road! What the hell? Nuts and bolts. Angie. Hang, hang. Rule Together with you is the lovely lady. The the large truck looks like it tried to go towards the gas pump and then just barreled and stopped. It's still there now. Uh, as you can see this map, I hope you can see this map. Can't see it. You cannot see the map. But it's just a bunch of drawings. Why can't it? 
that's because we don't have a token there with visibility. Oh my god, Get, shut the hell up. No token vision, global illumination bright, shut up. <laughs> I had the lighting setting set up, but apparently, oh, whatever. Okay, see now. Or already have, and they should have to have vision nowadays. Maybe we. Holy shit, my stomach just went nut wild. <laughs> it's never made that sound before. Fog exploration track, fog exploration. Okay, okay, now. That sounds like my loader. <sighs> Bella just comes yeah, to yeah, I tried refreshing. Let me get back in and tell me if it works. Oh, whatever. Your car stops right in front of a... So there's a mud road that goes north. A truck is diagonally parked over it. To your right is a gas station with a cover. Uh, a little bit further back was this large roof with several pillars. Uh, storage area outdoors. Next to the gas station to your right is a small office space of sorts. There's also a car next to it and a garage door. So. Oh hey, refreshing did work. Yes, and slightly up ahead, further on the road, appears to be the small cafe diner. There's also another car parked in front of that. So. Uh, the car. Awesome. I'm gonna go investigate that. I'm curious about the, be the, the, the burden this beast stricken here as well. Ha huh, ha, huh, handsome. Yeah, oh, I, I got a lovely picture that I can show you that can help set the mood a little bit. The mood. Da 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 mood. Here you go. Oh. Fun fact, that is technically incorrect. There is no entrance that is adjacent to... Oh, wait, no, that's the office. I don't get this part of the map, but... So, <laughs> that map's incorrect because the gas station is next to the office, not the diner. <laughs> so, whatever. Point is, that's kind of what you're dealing with. It's cold, it's thundering, it's storming, there's a truck parked on the road that's in the way. You could drive around if you wanted to, that's not a problem, but... I was a concern when you were driving full speed. All right. So, move where you want to, gang. You you have control of your tokens. Move them. I'm going to be yeah. going over here. And hopefully... I follow the door to you. Uh, I'm going to bring a, a lady into the diner. Paul will follow, Press mostly because he, because he wants a hot cup of coffee. Oh, you must have many drinks. <laughs> well, he's going to pay for this one himself. Don't, Don't worry. He's going to buy a hot cup of coffee for, for the lady. Inspecting this truck, it appears to be... Uh, it's, it's a livestock vehicle, because it has like all those openings in the back. Of course it is. If you had an appropriate skill of some sorts, I could tell you what kind of animal it was, but... I do not. Someone... Like, the car... Like, close look. This thing has... The, the front lights are still on. The key is still in there. It's really I, weird. So the... Is it running? Oh, whoops! You guys all have have adjectives now. <laughs> it's running, yes. Oh, I'm snobbish now. The I hell? came here to see if I needed to fix it, but it is already running. But hang on, that means I've got to first send these in here to see what Alex is doing. As you enter the diner, you were greeted to quite a scene. Well, actually, it's described as a cat. Listen, I want to call it a diner because the sign says diner. I'm confused. You're yeah. also the uh, floor keeper, so. Oh, <laughs> How can I trust anyone? <laughs> in the diner are five people. There's an elderly couple sitting at a at a at a table in the back. These are, by the way, those diner seats where like two benches are pressed together and then there's tables in between them. Yeah. Unassuming heck. <laughs> <laughs> Unassuming with a helmet like that. Uh, behind the, the counter is a diner waitress. That's all I need to know. That's all you can tell, at least, from a, from a, from a first look. There's also this, uh, what's Sam Keel? Sam 
kill him. Let's see. An overweight, bald with a comb over, and a broom mustache, who looks like a, a businessman in the flesh. He is loudly proclaiming. Then there is a prematurely aged, with a bushy beard and a thick, pink, fleshy face. A, ch a quite large man. Who also looks quite strong for what it's worth. He also has the fantastic skill appraised, but only for pigs. That sounds awesome, actually. Well, a master of identifying pigs. What, what gets so me perfect. is that there's also Winifred Brewer, who has 90 in appraising apple pies. <laughs> well, I, want some that that. God of pie. I am a master of apple pies, baby! That's a, that is amazing, actually. Anyway, when you walk in, the first thing that happens is that you see Jake Burns constantly muttering... He's, like, angry, he's slamming his fist. There's a couple of empty beer bottles in front of him, and then there's this cup of, of coffee, because the beer didn't do it. So, like, God damn it. I know what I saw, and I know what I saw! Uh, well, I'm, I'm gonna guide our lady friend into, like, a booth to, like, sit, you know, with Pasa, and I'm gonna like, uh, excuse me, hi, Mary... Murray Maple, uh, what, what did he see? Oh, oh, oh. Christ. Let's take a look-see. What did he see? His flatbed truck. There we go. I saw this thing. It was, uh, like a lightning bolt that walked through the trees. Nah, you, 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 <laughs> you city folk wouldn't understand with your fancy hats and your glasses. Especially not a lady like you. They don't have city hats, no. I'll tell you, I saw this thing. I'll, I'll call. I'll tell you what I call it. It's a dead light. It eats people. It eats them with big lightning hands. Uh, you saw a a walking light. Yeah. Uh, that that that's actually very interesting. Uh, what? When and, uh, like, how? Was it tonight, or was it, like, when the, did you eat it? The lady at behind the counter, the athletically built, just under five foot tall, short, and ash blonde hair, cut into a bob, says that you, you really shouldn't believe everything that Jake here has to say. It's a stormy night, he probably just saw a lightning bolt flash in front of his eyes. The man uh, at the other end of the uh, counter goes, Yes, 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 it's nothing! Why would it be anything around here? Hey, isn't... Amelia? He, he points at the lady that you've been escorting. Why is she in such a state? Did you do something to her? Oh, no, we, we found her in the middle of the road. Mm -hmm. I was gonna ask for a doctor, but then I got you know, sidetracked. Uh, do, do you know where a doctor is? Cause, uh... <laughs> oh, I wouldn't recommend going out in a storm like this. It's way too rowdy-towdy. Uh, do, you, do you have anyone who could like look look after her? Is she she not? She she also mentioned a light. But... Hey, people outside, you're still taking a look at this car. Uh, Hank, can you roll me mechanical repair? Oh, uh, yes, one moment. As you quickly identify the car, potential problems and stuff. He does not treat his car well. The drive belt obviously needs to change. The brake pads are quite worn out. He doesn't even do tire rotation. This man did not rotate his tires. The bastard. I tell you what. I love tire rotation for one reason. It's like people go, well, of course your tires rotate. They spin on a wheel. And it's like, no, that's not what, what you're rotating. That's, that's the fun part. <laughs> state of what can only be described as well you can't read it through his helmet probably anger sorry dorothy is probably a little more distracted checking the nearby area in case it dorothy you see a light dancing through the trees gun you take your gun out the light seems to be moving towards you and occasionally like flashes you in the face Tires aren't even rotated, Dorothy. Ping, lightning. What about lightning? There's lightning the everywhere. We're in a storm. He, he, he turns where she's trying to make him look. The place her gun is pointed. Yeah, where the gun is pointed. Dorothea? 
The thing is coming close enough to the trees that you're going to be able to see whatever it is soon enough. A shadowy figure with long, lighting tendrils is coming towards you. What do you do? What do you do? I could yell at it. Stay 50 feet away. <laughs> you know what? You can roll me intimidation to see if your voice carries. Well, okay, you know what? Roll me strength, then. It's a little bit more. Like, here. The strength of your lungs! You you manage to call out over the loud clattering of the rain. The light stops. As your eyes get a moment to adjust to the darkness, now that he's not fucking flashing you every ten seconds... Jackass. I did not expect that to work. You can tell that it's actually some sort of person. In the distance, you see a broad, stocky, a man built like an ox, thick dark hair, slick with rain, and bushy eyebrows matted by the rain as well. He seems to be breathing heavily and standing there, just eyes directly on you. He's holding a flashlight. I too am holding a flashlight. It's currently held, uh, I guess, my shoulder by my uh, cheek. Oh, put your gun down. It appears to be a fellow. The Maybe it's the driver. The car light. <laughs> oh wait, I accidentally made you invisible. <laughs> I can't see them. I'll tell you right now. My gods. <laughs> Marianne, you're in the cafe having a chit chat. Yeah, that's I'd like to know about this. You know, I'd like to order a coffee for our man who had a few. And uh, get to know about this light, and also see about anyone who can take care of a lady. I was just sitting down by the by, by the road of my truck. I was making some repairs, because, you know, that old damn thing doesn't listen no more as much as it should. Oh, is that your truck up front? Mm-hmm. So I was transporting one of my prized pigs. Now, you know what I happened? I'll tell you what happened. I'll tell you exactly what happened. I thought, you know, I let my pig out. Let it get a little, little nibble nibble. And then this thing comes out of the trees. This large lightning comes out of the trees. And suddenly I hear my pig go, oink! The squeal of death, I tell you. As they want to do. Uh, oh, that's really like that. I called for him, but he didn't come back. And the lights started getting closer and closer and closer. And I, oh, I, I took my... Oh, I ain't gonna stick around. <laughs> I ain't gonna stick around, I told you. So I drove down as fast as I could. I'm gonna get I'm gonna get that thing when I see it again. It ain't gonna take my pig without no without no fight. Well, uh, take piggies over pigs. I I I assume I have a a, a card for assault awareness. I feel like if, if you uh have any more information, uh, I have a department that's really interested in these types. I don't want to hear nothing about you 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 god hating atheist with your Occultisms. Especially not from no woman. You ain't good for nothing. Well, that's perfectly fine. I'm just gonna put this card down here. And I'm still gonna pay for your coffee. Ha, <laughs> you might try that, but he can't read! <laughs> Give it to Marie and just let her pay. Can I please ask about Emily? Why she's in such a dire shape? Such a real Outside, uh, the person has approached you. I presume that you've been able to sort of talk this out to get uh, him to approach slowly. Yeah, keeping still at enough of a distance to be very safe while we get the tank and people between us. He is dressed in university clothes. He appears to be barely out of his teens, 2019 maybe. He also seems to be very disheveled. And has a crazed look on his face, like he's been through a lot in a very short period of time. What's your name, stranger? B -b -b Billy. My name's Billy. Hey, you don't seem to be... <laughs> I kill Clem! I kill Clem! I was wondering if I'd hear Clem today. What killed Clem? It, it, was, it was in a box. He, it was, he opened the box and it came out and it killed him. It's gotta be here. Give us a description. 
so I know what I should be shooting at. It was a flash of light. It was, it, it was the wrath of God, I tell you. It was a light. A, a so bright, it hurts. Do you need to sit down, yeah. Billy? Uh, he's shivering and shaking, though you can't tell if it's the cold or the extreme conditions that he's under. Also, you... As he gets closer, like, you notice that he's just slathered in mud. Like, he's he probably been walking through these woods for a while if he's this bad. Okay, Billy. Come closer, but keep your hands up. He keeps his hands up. I trust you. I just need to be careful. He keeps his hands up, though you can tell that he's not in the mental state to really be thinking straight. So, what do you do? I can try to get him to walk towards the cafe. Handsome. Obviously, he probably needs somewhere to not be outside. I can keep talking to him the whole time. Try to okay. Ask him. You you guide him towards the cafe. Yep. I can keep like handling him, you know, trying to ask him more detail about what happened. As he walks to the cafe and the door opens up, he he looks around for a moment, sees all this light, and it's kind of he seems a little startled at the light, but then he sees Emily. And there's this shock of horror on his face as he yells, "No, no, no! You, you, you were dead! You were dead! You were dead! You were, you were there! You were dead! You, you were! No, no, no! I'm not! No, 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 no!" And he starts running off towards the towards the east in the woods. She was dead. I saw myself. Run! So hoping I, could, I was able to say that tonight. I was able to now. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you want to follow him, he's gonna vanish off the map. I don't think I'd be able to follow him too far. I don't want to get that separated in the middle of the night. Especially not in the rain with thunder and lightning. And something. Yeah, I'm not that. I'm not that tough. Hank strokes calmly towards uh, Dorothy. Strides. Kind of strides calmly. Go puts his hat there on the shoulder. Hmm. I appear we, I, I, I think we will find some more answers to whatever that what that was inside. I like pop my head out. It's like, did that man say Emily was dead? <laughs> he said many people were dead, actually. So You're like, dead! Uh, possibly at this point. I believe the young lad was touched in the head by lights. I'm a slide in. Anyone here know a Clem? Clem, 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 Clem. Um, eventually, uh, Mary Laker speaks up. Wait a minute. Was that Billy? That I think Clem, Billy, yeah. Cle Clem's, his, Clem's, Clem's his friend, I think. I know that he's associated with him. Yeah, uh, that was Billy. Uh, he seems like he's been through a lot. Do you guys have like a constable or something we can ask to maybe look for him? The nearest sheriff is a distance away, and with the rain like this. Yeah, uh, he was talking like this Clem guy's maybe injured. Wait a minute. Um, so, where's your gun, by the way? Just like, did you put uh, it back in? Strapped over my back. Handsome. It's a, it's a military one, so I had to strap it tight. Handsome. Well, uh, so what were we asking again? Just so that I can focus uh, my brain. I was just trying to see, uh, see if they could maybe help out, because I was saying that Clem guy apparently is injured. I'm trying not to say that he was saying he's dead. Hmm. Well, I wouldn't know where they would come from. There's not too many buildings around here. So, mm hmm So, anyone figure anything out about her? I say, uh, pointing at uh, the girl. The, uh, Sam Keelum speaks up, the the fat man. Uh, she, I think she lives nearby with her father. Or grandfather? Uh, the, the, she lives with s uh, some man in, in the woods. I don't know the details myself. I don't know too much. Do you know, like, the rough direction so we can try to get her home? I think if you go south a short distance, before the billboard, there's a road going off to the left. A right if you come from this direction, of course. I think Emily... Also mentioned the light. So. Also. Uh, 
Marianne, did you uh, find the doctor yet? Uh, don't don't want to mention the doctor. I I passed. But let me see if anyone here has any doctor skills, like medicine specifically. I don't think anyone does Honestly, though. Because you kept being distracted. <laughs> well, no, I, I you know, something about a doctor and be like, you know, let's, I'll let's well. Go. Actually, there is a doctor. He, that's Emily's uh, grandfather, who lives in the house nearby. Oh, that's convenient. Yes. So perhaps you should take her over... He stops talking. The lights flash quietly. Hank, your helmet begins to glow. There's these dancing wisps of light across it, like electrical currents. Same thing happens to the gun slung over your back. The metal coffee maker, too, follows this effect. The lights flash for a brief moment, but the glow persists briefly. How odd. I'm gonna take a picture of it. Click. <laughs> Hank's helmet glowing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, Hank is wondering now. What's going at the on? moment, uh, Dorothea will be looking in as many directions as she can to see if there's a source of this. You take a look around in this in in from here you can't see anything in like this building. Maybe if you go outside you could see more, but I'm gonna turn and look out the door that is still open behind me. Mary gets around the counter, goes, Could you just keep the door closed? It's really cold out and I would prefer not freezing over. Does this lightning thing happen a lot? I say well, the storm, oh, the weather's stormy, you know? That that happens uh, sometimes. Simple. Sometimes the weather's just stormy. That's how it works. Hey, Hank, let's go have a look. Yes, no, I, sh I fear we should <laughs> express caution. I think something may be trying to lure people. I do as well. That's why I don't want to do this alone. Buddy system. Oh, geez. well, we'll take a look when we're outside, dears. I have to go to the bathroom. Which, if you look at the map, is accessed by going through over around the outside. We'll oh, keep we'll we keep a little a... eye out for you while we're there. A bunch of people are weird. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna just. I'll keep in. Come on, Hank. Let's go over here. Also, real quick before Hank leaves, to the owner of the truck, and he lift, he lifts off, lifts off all the problems with the truck, but very stern. Jake Burns looks at you, and he's gonna start a fight. Like he gets mad. It's like, what did you say about my truck? I said you're mechanical burden beast. <laughs> okay, Isn't so. Jake, already already quite tense, already having lost a couple of sandy points today, is 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 mad as he gets up and he goes, Oh, you you think you could just touch Starks Ah I'm the man who knows the pigs around here and he and he charges towards you. Hank, what do you do? Uh wrench. Yeah Well I don't wanna kill him, but like Hank, who's been around is gonna just like grab him. Hank goes for a fighting brawl maneuver, going straight for the grab. Go to your combat tab, click me that br unarmed strike. Like so. Jake is going to... Jake is going to brawl right back to you. Hard success. Jake, uh, he did. Jake he did. Dexia. That, that was damaged. Jake Dexia. Moran, as, as in front of you, Jake just decked your friend right in the helmet. Which, right, uh, by the way, you you have like I, I'm gonna say that it doesn't do all that much because you're wearing a fucking helmet, so he just decks this middle helmet. Because you've been a little wordy, I'm just gonna go up to him and I'm gonna try to. Yeah, toss on counter, be like, hey. Ease up, buddy. Oh. Show me the goods. As you do some kung fu. <laughs> Don't forget to aim first. Alright, 
the hell do you do you really think you are, Missy? You just a little lady. I can, I'll show you what I got. Ro don't, don't forget to add outnumbered. He is out. He did technically out get outnumbered. So. Yeah, I can't. Click also, I have outer maneuvers. He is. Well, you have outmaneuvered, yes, Hank. It doesn't apply to you, but don't worry about it. Regular success. Oh, boy. He's going to try and dodge. Oh, no! You failed by one. You throw him on the counter, and you can roll me a interpersonal skill to try and tell him to shut the hell up and calm down. Right, that will be fast talk, I guess. And like, hey, listen. No, He's not me. No. <laughs> don't worry. You want, you, want, you want to push that roll, maybe? Speaking, speaking tongues at him. Holy yeah. shit. Boink. Calm down. Now is not the time. Now is not the time. Maybe you should look after your truck and your pig and see what it's in the situation. By the way, here's something important. Um, the game technically does not award you this if you have a bonus die on a roll, but... You're allowed for me, as long as it's only one bonus die, to still mark a thing as development. So under skills, you see the little uh, star next to your number? Yes. If you double-click that, it becomes yellow. And that indicates that you've performed it successfully. Okay. So t just do that. If, if you... Uh, that is for when the development phase happens, which is generally after a chapter of adventures and stuff. You get to roll against your skill, and if you roll over your skill, so you fail it... You get to roll 1d10 and add that. So that's how you improve your skills over time. And you get that first check mark by that that gold dot by successfully using a skill first. So. Okay, that's that's why I was kind of like, oh, okay. All right, you you managed to calm him down, and Jake's like, oh man, you sh shut the hell up, stupid women. They don't understand pigs like I do. I'm so mad that I rolled that high. <laughs> it, I have to say, Claire. I'm so pissed yeah. off I rolled high. I, it felt so XCOM-ish. Like, I got this, because I'm the master brawler here. Oh, okay. Um, you know what? You can roll me an extreme difficulty spot hidden check, Dorothea, as you are partially distracted by the fact that there's people inside and it's raining. Things ain't going your way. Actually, how about you make that hard with a penalty die? Spot hidden. Okay, cool. You don't notice anything. Oh, man, I love that. I love that the little spiders indicate what the difficulty is. Oh, it's how many levels you failed by. Um, after a moment, around the corner comes that old lady. She is not very fast, which is a movement of eight. Oh, it's because I never entered her age. That's why. I, I probably popped out with you after that embarrassment. What took you so long? This old lady comes running up towards you. Let's see, what's her movement rate? Her movement is four. Holy shit. Age 68. The game says it's actually five, but whatever. She, at a very, uh, at a relatively small, slow pace, because she's old, comes towards you and goes, <laughs> My husband! My husband is gone! Ma'am, ma'am, I get a far closer. What do you mean, gone? He was, he was outside, and now he's... Everything is gone! He's gone! He's gone! Uh, I I went to to the to the water closet to have to, to to take a little potty break and then when I came back outside he he was gone. There was this weird goo on the floor, and and the the the, the, the handle the metal handle it glowed like ghost. There's there's a ghost. There's a ghost. I'm gonna tap on the window that is barely beside me, trying to get uh Marion's attention. Oh, uh, I'm just gonna walk out. Yep. We got a ghost, maybe. Don't worry, oh. ma'am. We'll find your husband. We're actually specialists for this. Kind of. Cool. She'll go back inside, then. Assuming that you... Stay e calm. <laughs> oh, my. Please. There's a chance that he may li very likely be alive with the other victims. Maybe. The, the young woman made it very together. Taking a look around the place, there the, the whole thing is surrounded by these bricks. You know, you know when they take like one tile of brick and surround the building with it, so you have like a dry walkway to walk around the place. Um, there's this puddle of 
mud, ash, like wet. It's wet because of the rain, but there's like this puddle of mud, ash, on top of a set of fine shoes. Okay, I Wait. take the rest. I get to put the it's... flashlight that I have on it. That looks so gross. Ugh. Poke at it with the uh, my knife. Doesn't seem to move. It's, no, I'm checking for solids. No solids. It is simply a pile of ash and some shoes that have been left behind. Hmm. Who supposed he was reduced to ashes? I think there'd be bone left, though. Bones don't burn very easily. How are we supposed to find something that could reduce us to ashes? Guns, hopefully. Hmm. Now I'm getting the handle, which he mentioned. I had something on it. It. She claimed that the handle was glowing, and it doesn't seem to be glowing no more. Well, horned. I'm gonna pan across the ground around the uh, thing, see if there are any footprints in the mud. You can roll me spot hidden or track, whichever you want. Well, I'm spot hidden to see. Yes. I get to possibly improve that one. So it's clear that they walk side by side because his tracks are there, but there are no other tracks around. Even though you look pretty close and not even like worn tracks or anything, there's nothing. So he never went anywhere. Tracks lead up to the shoes, so I hate saying it, Hank. It almost sounds like he might be right. Though, if that is true, and he was reduced to ashes, why would the woman and the young man be be alive still? Right, and also, if he was reduced to ashes, how would there not have been any sound or really bright light that we would have noticed? There this be a lot of power. Well, this is around the corner, so... Mr. Prospero yeah, comes but... around the corner. He's panting. Amelia, I got... Amelia just... Amelia just got part of her memory back. She... Remember something about a robbery at her house. Robbery? She said that her father was hit or something. And the man might be injured. Yeah. That we need. So the father was hit. Some boys no one knows about had a box. Great. I almost think I know what's going on here. Uh, Dorothea says, getting back up to her feet. Alright, what, what's your... We should your get to her home. Alright, should we take her, or should we just go on our own? We should take her with us, because she's probably better there, even if her father isn't, than she is with whatever the hell's going on here. Right. I'm sure that's why she could go hysterical. And she'd also know where she lives, so I mean, that, that'd be helpful. She could go hysterical with three people who are capable of fighting, and Paul. No, hey, pa Paul's capable. Think. Anyway. I'm sure I saw him flailing on the ground a bit ago. Hey, listen, I'm a, I'm a marksman with my gun. I just <sighs> come on, benefit of the doubt. Gent. Let's be honest. <sighs> so get Emily. Hey, Hank goes As you guys turn around to go back, you see Jake walking up to his car and getting in. He, he looks as grumpy as you'd expect him to. His car probably is going to take a bit to start up, but Where it is then. Going? It is then that you see the light in the trees again. I like it. Everyone sees it. It's a pretty bright light, and and, and Hank's okay, like, the, oh. the spooky lights that come from the woods. Spooky, spooky, scary. Oh no, this does not in fact include. Excuse me, that does not in fact include that. This. Shimmering mist of light floating a couple of feet off the ground in the same way that oil is suspended on water drifts towards the car. It moves with surprising speed for what it is an oil stain of brightness. Uh, from here, you can see the, the his, his dashboard is lit up so you can see like a dim light over his face as he's like desperately trying to get his car to start up. What do you do? I'm taking a shot at it. Let's see how far are you. Uh, I think think that the grand is such a range it doesn't really matter. Uh, go for it. Uh, well, you, that means. Fucking get him. Yeah. Uh, no modifiers. Uh, 
I think everything's fine, yes. Really? Your bullet misses, but to be fair, there was a lightning strike, during which you could see that this creature is... weird. It seemed to grow very spiky when that lightning impact happened. Spiky, aggressive, angry, sharp. I'm gonna I'm try to run towards the truck, be like, Mr. Burns, get out of the car! Cool. Can you roll me a sanity check? Because as you get close, you suddenly realize that this self isn't a costume. It isn't. It is this. It is nonsensically drifting in and out of existence. So I just click on sanity? Yes, please roll me sanity. Oh. How come all of our rolls are like over 70 today? You lose two points of sanity, and you stop at his car, freezing as you realize what you see. <gasps> Hank, what do you do? Well, Hank, uh, Hank is going to back up the reporter <clears throat> and try to, uh... Hank just, like, running punches it out of existence completely. I see the light beast. It is not a young man with a flashlight. He called it the light beast. Uh, can I run up and try to punch this thing? Sure. I'm gonna, I'm gonna run up and try to punch this thing. So. so, as you get closer, you see you have to roll me that sandy check first. But also, Marianne, you notice that this thing has it's like rubbing up against the door, and the door melts at its touch. Yeah. I'm gonna like open the other door and try to get Jake out. Not a power check, Hank. Sanity. Oh, sanity. Where's the? That's yeah, off to the left. It's on, it's on the left side, under hit points. Sanity, the text. There all the time, Claire. Sanity. Oh, wow, I'm dumb. Listen, Claire, we know that you're dumb. Pat, Pat. Yeah. Oh, you bet. You still lose one point of sanity. I think, let me just double check that. Where is the sanity loss? Okay, it's 1d4. Okay, cool. Marvelous. Uh, yeah, bad, bad. You're, you're, you don't like what you see there. Oh, boy. Tank. Okay, Hank, you wanted to punch it, was it? Yeah, I'm gonna take a sock at it. Be gone, fiend! So, do I punch it for, uh. Show me the goods. Don't forget to aim first. Oh, I didn't aim. I apologize. Oh, never mind. Uh, let's see if it can dodge. Skill 40. I think that's a hard success, so I think it's gonna just, uh. Do you. You're trying to punch this fluid form of light. So, no. Also, I'm going to need a POW check from you. Also, since you're within six feet of it, you need to make a hard POW check. You start to... By the way, lady standing next to him, you... Jake doesn't look like he's in a good state. Good. The light, yeah, because the light is time. supernaturally mesmerizing, and your mind is drawn to it. It's woo, you manage to keep your, you manage to keep your head straight. Okay, cool. The thing burns through the car, and it's just gonna try and wrap itself around. Can I, can I try to pull Jack out? Jake. Okay, cool. How about if we're gonna do that? Uh, let's see. Well, your dex is higher, so yes, you can technically do that before it does that. We're going to say that's an opposed fighting maneuver. That makes sense to me. Okay. So it's going to roll consume. Alright, it failed. Well, you have a chance. Bella jerks Mr. Burns out of the car. Ha! The creature begins to look very spiky again. Hank, what do you do? You know, because there are many things, but death is not one of them. Uh, I'm gonna, Hank's gonna fall the hell back, because that thing melted through, he now understands, sees the thing that melted through that vehicle, and he don't like that. So he, he, he's, uh, going to assist in helping drag the pig man to the diner. Fire Handsome. At it. Just shoot it! Shoot it! Shoot it! I tell you what! Should I go for my next shot? Sure, go for it. Come on, let's hit this thing. Man. Oh, wow, I like that it actually mentions, like, distances. That's adorable. Yeah, these, these 
above 70 is really uh, <laughs> coming down. I only have it 65%. A brief forward. moment later, the lightning, there's a, this big lightning bolt that hits the truck, causing it to shut off. Like, all the lights go out, the thing shakes for a moment. The creature immediately flees. Like, it suddenly just starts slithering away. Perhaps it admits defeat and will not fight against overwhelming odds. But it slithers out of here. And you are left with nothing but the rain. And also, your ears are ringing because you were very close to a lightning bolt impact. And I was shooting a gun. That's loud. Also, you can also roll me a sanity check because you are now fully aware of the fact that that thing ain't good. Ain't normal. You lose a sandy point, but you keep it together. <sighs> My sandy 69. Nice. Nice. You quickly head inside. Paul is going to keep watch. This is bad, man. This is bad. What was that? It apparently was a walking light. Jake, who is now pale as a ghost, says that that was... That's, that's, the, that's the dead light. You see, I told you women ain't good for nothing. You, you couldn't even hit that thing. How could you not hit that thing? Is huge. Okay. Yeah. Did you notice it barely existed half the time? And a woman pulled you out of the truck, you sorry bastard. I could have, I could have done that myself. Just, just fine. You looked like you were just sort of sitting there, kind of like a bitch. <laughs> we all, everyone just, everybody hates him. You want to, you want to fight about it, huh? Man, this I'm guy the one really with the gun. Just... So shut up. I mean, we could always go for round two. I mean, I could, <laughs> <laughs> could always go for round two. Yeah, it's like enhanced XCOM, but man, I'm gonna. Like, I threw him on the counter and pulled him out of the truck. You could actually understand. So, uh, <laughs> how about instead of we get into a fight, Pigman? Because I actually was not there to learn your name. How about you tell me, what the fuck? Desires. I know ghosts, kinda. Not seen one like that. I don't. I don't know what what any of that is. I have no. I listen. What, what do you want me for? You so, got a pretty good look at it. You seem to know what it is. You got a name for it. Mary, where are you going? Mary is indeed slinking out of the place. Right. Can you roll me spot hidden? Or psychology, if you want. It's whatever you want, really. Whoever is... Well, Bella. She's the one who knows that Mary was leaving. Yeah, I'm busy arguing with Pig Man. She has a set of keys in her hand. She has... So, when you entered, Jake had, had his keys on the table. Like, near his, his cups and his bottles. She has those keys now. And she's, like, walking out of here. Uh, Mary, I, I don't think that's a good idea. I think we should, uh, stick around. She turns around, and she reveals that she has a gun, too. It's a twenty-two short automatic, but she has it. She's like, no, 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 you don't understand. I'm not sticking around while you all s start keeling over. I suggest you uh -huh. do the same. I'm close enough to recap for all this armor. Wait, I want to shoot the gun out of her hand. Sure, if you... Uh, how about we see if Hank can do the more immediately obvious and logical thing first? <laughs> Please do not use a rifle to shoot some gun out of someone's hands. I'm oh, so you're, still out. you're not lucky, Luke. Yeah. yeah, I'm like I'm like right next to her, so I get advantage of that, or is that just regular? Just regular. Okay. What the f on the number? You succeed, Claire. I know, but like all the seventies. <laughs> well, she fails. Whatever, I grab her. I grab her. I grab the. You, you whack the gun out of her hand, which lands in the in the wet, drenched mud. I think I shoot the gun. I like the idea of like you're standing at Jay's story and just start aiming down towards the gun on the ground. Mm -hmm. Like a 45 degree I'm angle. Yeah, I'm watching you, gun. She's like, I, I, you, 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 all are, you all are nuts if you want to stick around here like idiots. Sheeps to the slaughter, I say. I'm not getting killed now. Stupid Billy. She runs away. Huh, huh. Take her down. Uh, well, she should. Did she pick up her gun? Because if she did, we'll let her go. She, leave her, she left her gun on the ground. She Why just has the keys. She, just, she apparently knows what's going on. And she's oh. still in the vehicle. <laughs> Alright, well, then I'll chase her. 
fuck, fuck, fuck. Yeah, I was gonna. Yeah, I was gonna grab her. Cool. You know what? You can ro one of you can decide to roll me brawl with a uh, bonus die because the two of you are trying to grab her both. I mean, I got the big brawl. Also, I'm gonna make a quick adjustment to your sheet. I'm gonna remove those ennies that you weren't using. Pick her up. <laughs> Hard success. She's probably not going to make it. Well, she's going to dodge on this one. She just wants to get the hell out of here. Regular oh. difficulty, but not a hard difficulty. And that's what she needed to beat. You grab onto her, the two of you. And are like, hey, you can't jack cars. That's illegal. That's a crime, bitch. That is a well, the car like half crime. melted anyway. Well, the door is half melted. The, the car still probably works, maybe. You didn't get a chance to look. Get you very far if it's busted. If you want to die, that's your own damn right. I'm not sticking around to die, you idiots! I'm too pretty to die. So what are you doing now that you have her? And she's like, Rah, I'm gonna wrestle out of here. Yeah. Bring her inside. You bring her back inside. Sam is a little disheveled that an employee that has gotten out of hand. Um, he does, however, remind you that uh, we should maybe go and make sure that the doctor's all right. It seems to be a very, very emotional night, and Emily needs help, does, doesn't she? Yes, yes, yes. And Mary's like, don't go to the doctors. Don't. Why not? Tell us well, what's going on. Well, you have to drive through the, the, the forest, and you'd have exposed yourself to that thing, wouldn't you? It didn't seem all that fast. Uh, giving it an estimate, it's deed not that... It's not that fast, no, but... Like, raw speed-wise, you could probably run further faster, but... You know. It... So, mm -hmm. Mary. What? what do you know about what's going on? What are you talking about? I don't know, you just seem to have some sort of idea when you're ready to ditch out on everybody else and run off in the middle of the night driving a vehicle that's not yours. Well, just because I look out for myself doesn't mean anything, does it? Just throwing out accusations? Well, I mean, it's kind of easy to make accusations about, you know, bad behavior. <laughs> well, free, feel free to do whatever you want, but you're not cops. So do, so do act within the dotted lines. You know, somewhere in my wallet, I have an actual license to kill. <laughs> you want to roll me intimidation with a bonus die on that? Hell yeah. I'm terrible at intimidation, but, you know, this could give me you know, a level of honor. Oh, hell yeah! <laughs> uh, don't forget to mark that one gold, because normally it doesn't do it on bonus dice, but I say you can. You slap your hand on the table. It, I assume your wallet's under it, or like the the license itself. I don't know what you're putting on the table, but you're like, bam. How do I make you tuck it in? Pistol. Got to double click it, yeah. It's, it's, listen, I'll, listen. I just Emily is is one of those rich, spoiled kids. All right, she got everything she wanted. She got everything she wanted. I just wanted a slice. So I asked Billy and his friend Clement to, to just get a slice for me. And so Clem and Billy went into the house and robbed it. Well, yeah. Look, she, she's just a little, she's just a little hurt. Nothing wrong there. And Clem's dead. Oh, I don't know if Clem's dead. That's what Billy said. Well, Billy can say whatever the hell he likes. He's insane well, now. Because Billy also had assumption that Emily was dead, so. Yeah, which it's... is. Worrying. Well, lovely, you brought a zombie into this house. You shouldn't invite those, you know? Did, did Billy fail to murder Emily? The problem is, I'm worried he didn't do it. Oh, she's walking and talking. Yeah. And How many cult books have you read? Cult books? I think looking at the, uh, the Emily. There's a reason I want to keep her close. Emily is still looking uh, like a corpse, pale and all. 
kind of kind of troubled, but you know, it's, it's been a rough night. Hey Hank, let's check her pulse. Yeah. I want to make sure she's healthy. Not be high. Shank. <laughs> it's called Shank while I'm tired. Uh, Hank ho holds uh, ho holds your arm and checks your pulse. Can you roll me first aid? With a bonus die, since you're trying to do something extremely simple. Uh, wait, where does it say? Ah, there it is. Okay, click. To anyone who wants to argue this, if you have no idea where to look for a pulse, you ain't finding one. Okay, I, yeah, I did pretty well on that. Awesome. You, 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 uh, yep, you, you put your, she has a pulse, yes. And it's pretty fast and panicked. creature, as we have seen, would have no trouble killing any of these civilians here. So why is she alive? I have a theory. What's that? Hank turns to the diner. The creature is after someone in particular. And who would that be? Probably the thieves. You included. But that is just a guess. I tell you what. Tell you what? I tell you what? I mean, it's not a bad theory for something like this. Usually these sort of spectral entities go after specific people. My guess is that the kidnapping that it can do with how damaging it is to physical objects damages the captive victims, and if it doesn't find what it wants, it releases them, and they, it, well, are, end up like this. There, there's, one th there's one slight thing that, that I would like to bring up. Specifically, Jake would like to bring up. Then why the hell did it go for me? I think it's looking... If Hank's right, it's looking for someone. It doesn't know who it's after until it gets close. Or it likes pigs. So then we will not find more answers until we find the doctor. By the way, it's uh, Mr. Teddy Brewery, who comes through the door, stumbling. The missing guy? Yes. Is he naked? Nope. It seems to be... Well, I mean, his entire front is slathered in mud as if he dove into it. But other than that, he's just uh, kind of out of breath as he sits down. Someone please look him over. What happened to you? There was like a giant pile of ash and your shoes. No, I, I, he puts he, he holds out his foot as best as he can for his age. He's like, I still have my shoes on. No, no, I I was back there waiting for my lovely wife to come back out. When I I, I oh, when he fed, you wouldn't believe it. I saw the spotlight in the darkness came out towards me like floating, like hell itself was beckoning me over. I felt fear in my heart, and I dove under the car, and then then it went away for a while. Now, of course, in my age, it's a bit hard to get out from under a car, so. No, I was terrified of that, yes. So I waited a moment. How many gunshots? Is that relevant? It, it, I'm testing. He would probably just... Listen, I don't I don't have like a little notepad here where I write down the amount of gunshots that happen, but he'll give you the correct amount. Okay. She's trying to test to see if he remembers everything, because she's starting to think he's not real now. Well he can at least count. Do we have the shoes of the of the of the presumed victim that we thought was him? Uh, I took a picture of him, but yeah, um, but I'm I test. Six yeah. Hours. Yeah. Well, the, yeah. the the shoes are still back there if you want to okay. give a look. Like okay, for the most part, yeah, for because I now have another theory, but it's a bit more odd. What is it? I'm gonna get the shoes while you guys talk. There's a possibility that he actually was grabbed by the creature, but another him. Was ungrabbed. <laughs> Hank is now going into the realm of uh, quantum mechanics. <laughs> quantum. Alternative universe <laughs> people. Quantum teleportation with paradoxes. What do yes. those words even mean? I say, wandering in a pair of shoes. In the city of the Brotherhood of Metacopus, we actually th thought about with the, with the theory of propane physiology. We could access an idea of transportation called quantum teleportation where we exist simultaneously between two points it's very dangerous obviously uh, Marian, you got any do you understand anything he's saying now listen weird science is like that 
but he actually tapped his helmet. It's all written here. I got all the notes up here. He actually has notes transcribed inside his helmet. And they look exactly like like a wizard book would. <laughs> so. You don't know that, though. The evening is progressing. The stage is set. The monster is free. Shall we call the night here? I yeah. have shoes. Actually, real quick, though, I want to I wanna see if the shoes are his, actually his shoes. Sam speaks up and says that those shoes belong to a previous employee who was kind of grumpy about being fired. And then Mary's like, well, apparently all you can hire are grumpy people then. I think he's dead Hanks. because there's a giant pile of ash out there. And that's what Hanks Which Hanks apparently side. no one noticed. Okay. I will ask a follow-up. Were there any other ruffians that you dragged into your wanting to slice scheme? No, it should just be Clem and Billy. Are there any well, maybe other there was people a... who are disappearing today? Um, well, Sam speaks up as he looks at... There there were these weird men in suits who were here a while ago. They were asking strange questions about the place. About Emily's family specifically. But they just seemed to be, you know, in, maybe they were related to his medical practices. I'm going back to my first theory then. Oops. Yep. Young woman, you were probably safest here for now. We must go to the doctors. Grab Emily. We need to keep her with us, of course. Cool. I'd rather not come back to have a, you know, cafe full of zombies. I'll take this as far as you want to, by the way. Like, if you want to end it, it's up to you. Oh, yeah, it's like almost 5 a.m. Yeah, I think we'll start with them. Uh, Next time... Let's see what we're going to stumble across as you go down the muddy road. So well, do we do the progression things at the end of the session? That is not at the end of the session. That's at the end of the chapter. Oh, okay. So once you've finished up this mystery and arrived in Detroit, I'll say that that's one chapter for you. Okay, I'm... So, okay. I'm completely brain dead. How's the progression thing work again? So when you pass a, in a skill check, you see that dot next to the skill that someone will be on the skills tab yeah the gold yeah uh we roll at the end of the chapter we roll against it and if you fail it you get to add uh what was it how much is it sappy well what the hell what does that button even do uh if you fail it you got 1d10 added to that skill yes to show oh, cool. you progressed in your skills if you succeed i guess you don't get anything because you're good enough to not need it So, That's yeah, using a variety of skills can allow you to grow more. I wonder, though, what what does the development phase button even do? Oh. Oh, oh! That's so cool! What's it do? So there's a button. Uh, at least I can see it. There's, like, this lock pad at the right. Yeah, I see it on the If you click it, right if you click it... Oh, I can add skills. Cool. If you click it, you get a button to the left that says, like add experience okay. that's like a development phase and if you click it it automatically rolls those checks and then rolls the additions oh. if it can do any oh that's cool so i'm going to remove those awesome. first because you didn't get any of those points but that's how that works apparently well that makes that's life really a lot cool. easier i mean to be fair it's always fun to go down the list and see where you get your points it is but yeah it makes it quick okay um i need to reclick all the ones that you have cuz you know you have them Mechanical repair is not upgraded. Aw, well, maybe you'll get it on the actual try. <laughs> Unlikely, like because that's your game mode. Chat and brawl, but... There isn't too much left to this, but it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. Okay, let me just click that button and turn it off. Qu quantum teleportation. I don't know what to think about this new sheet. I kind of like the old one. It was a bit stiffer. And this one's a bit more... Ooh. I do like this one. Foundry overall is pretty nice, just because a lot of it's so similar. By the way, if you ever feel like it, there is a backstory section where you can fit in all kinds of stuff, like injuries and scars. So, I have no idea. Yeah. I, by the way, do not fill in your age because it will change your movement rates, and that okay. doesn't apply to the system. Oh, I already uh, did. Well, well, it's not a problem. If you're like young enough, it is not a problem. But if you're old enough, then it starts to degrade your 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 movement rate, and that doesn't apply in pulp. Actually. Does it still do that? Let's, let's, let's take you to 80. Uh, yeah, it still does that. Yes, it does. Okay. 
But 28 was uh, acceptable. Okay. I'm gonna be... He was a Grand Squire in his Brotherhood of Malchemist, Mal 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 which he claims will thanks to who you be. Oh my god. God dang it, Hank. <laughs> he's, young, he's a younger Hank Hill. Hank of the Hill. I also love that it tracks daily sanity loss. On that note, by the way, there's a there's a little arrow loop below that. Whenever a day passes, which is you've had some time to calm down, relax, chill, just kind of let go. Yes, because you go insane if you lose too much sanity in a day. Essentially, too much stress. Stone Shard actually, very early access in Zelda RPG has a has a sanity meter where in the, like the the wearing of like. Battles stuff like starts to get to you. You can actually increase it just by little things like picking flowers or just showing out tavern. Uh, as a quick notice, like if you wonder, you gain a temporary insanity when you lose one fifth, I think, of your max of your current sanity after a day has passed and all that. You know, so for Claire, it would be like twelve. You can lose twelve in a day and still be fine. Right. Anyway. Ooh. There's one more thing you got to take care of while we're busy with this. Encounters with strange energy the entities. Uh, the maximum you can lose to the deadlight is four, so you can write down deadlight and then be like one out of four. There's a cap to how much sanity you can lose to a single creature, because at some point you're just like, yeah, I've seen that. Wait, Not so if I lost two, it would be two out of four. Yeah. Oh, so... It's under the backstory under the section Encounters with Strange Entities. Anyway, go get to bed. Get yourself some sleep. That was nice. How did you like it? Was it good? Was it fun? Yeah, I've gone. I yeah, loved it, was it. A fun, it was a fun one. It was an interesting setup for our first uh, cult adventure. The car chase uh, segment and with the flashbacks was actually very amusing. I actually quite liked that the most. And Claire got to throw a guy out of a window. <laughs> I, yeah, I got the headbutt dude out of a window. Well, well, let's hope I that... I got to say that boy ain't right. So. Let's, let's hope that um, those rolls are not an ill woman, but just uh, getting the bad rolls out early. Hey, on the plus side, if you can roll that shit on your improvement checks, that's all the better. I know, because then we'd all of a sudden get like all our skills up. <laughs> Who knew that sucking was so beneficial? <laughs> I do like though that on all of our skills that were like sixty-five and over, we just kept maxing. Yeah, I, I was having some XCOM two flashbacks. <laughs> that fucking that that zero zero fumble from yeah, Paul. Right. Contains all my plans, dreams, and my future. Also, I like I like the fact that if someone punches you in the head, it doesn't do much because you're wearing a helmet. <laughs> I like to think he will respond automatically with a headbutt if someone punches him in the head, kind of like a little, you know, you should have, lad. 